Welcome back, everyone, to Calls with the Wizard, and I am your host, Tony the Wizard, and I want to thank everybody who is tuned in, everybody who liked, comment, subscribed, unsubscribed. It doesn't matter. You guys are still watching. Everybody on the live chat, everybody who decided not to be on the live chat, much love, much respect to you guys. We're going to keep it pushing. Uh, I only have one announcement to make. Well, actually, two. Um, next week on Members Only, I'm going to be dropping uh, two contents. Two contents, the history of Scanless Studios. Um, a lot of you guys have called, and you guys can continue to call tonight and ask me about my history. I give a little bit of history on the Gangster Chronicles. If you guys have not gotten a chance to watch Gangster Chronicles on YouTube with Big Steel and MC8, check out my interview. I was sitting right next to Cocaine, whom I had here on the podcast as well. Um, but on this, I'm going to release maybe about a 20-minute History on the Scanless Studio in the city of Alhambra. 
This was Steve Yano's studio, rest in peace, my ex-manager. Um, he had a studio and he had everybody there from Tina Marie to Biggie Smalls to Be Real to Kid Frost to you name it, Proper Dos, High C, DJ Quick. There was a lot of history there in the 90s and that was where I worked there for nine years. So I got to see everything. I have everything documented. I have receipts. So I have footage of the studio and I have pictures of everything. So when people like to ask me, you know, where were you, Tony? Well, I'm going to show you, but you have to become a member, okay? And we're going to do a part one and eventually a part two because there's just so many pictures. There are just so many things. If you guys are familiar with Brown Town, eventually they were called Brown Town Looters. Uh, I believe they were from Boyle Heights. Well, at least I know my boy Big Cedric was from Boyle Heights. There was three guys in the group, Big Cedric, Shotgun, and Clear. And they were all from East Los. And, um, you know, uh, they recorded a lot of music there as well. So I'm going to sh give them their shine and show them their love. So definitely tune in and check out the history of the Scanlon Studio. This all took place in the city of Alhambra. Uh, this is where I recorded Tina Marie. And uh, I still have the two-inch reels. As a matter of fact, I'll even show them on this, uh, you know, 20-minute history you know, on the Scanless Studio. So make sure you got to become a member. If you haven't yet, definitely do that because you guys are going to see it first, okay? Uh, other than that, um, if you guys didn't get a chance to check out Conversation with Marvelous, we had a really, really good one on Sunday. Definitely check that one out. That one's doing really, really good. So uh, other than that, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. Tonight, if you have a question, anything you guys want to ask me, uh, you know, you, you know what I really want to talk about tonight, believe it or not, I want to talk about hip hop. I really, really love the, the hip hop culture, whether it's breaking, whether it's emceeing, whether it's graffiti, whether it's DJing. Uh, a couple of days ago, there was a, over the weekend, I believe on Saturday, there was a B-Boy Summit or a B-Boy Breaking event in Seattle and it was live on YouTube and it was amazing. If you guys get a chance, I think it's called uh, Red Bull something if you guys type in red bull uh you'll see a bunch of breakers on the thumbnail click on that you'll everybody from japan from kazakhstan from seattle where well, they were in seattle but from even here in la all went out there to battle it was really really dope i grew up with the hip-hop culture and i love talking about it and i love sharing it so without further ado please allow me to introduce tonight my co-host to take calls with me the one and only Norbert, also known as News with Norbies. Norbies, how are you doing? Hey, good, Tony. Very good, very good. Uh, I just want to mention also you did have uh, two amazing uh, women uh, artists, uh, Natalia Chacon and uh, Ms. Gatis. Ms. Gatis, definitely check them out. Yeah, yeah. And, and a while back, even Carla from Texas. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So the, the ladies are, are doing it. They're doing yes, it. Yes, and you know what? Speaking of ladies, if you go back, and for anybody that wants to see this B-Boy uh Breaking contest that happened Saturday in Seattle. DM me at Tony A. The Wiz, and I'll send you the link. Because the reason why I'm pushing that is because you brought up the women. There were two girls there, bro. There are yeah. actually three. Yeah. But two girls were battling dudes, and they were dope, man. They were really, really dope. I mean, uh, women, they tend to be more uh, flexible than men also. I've well, noticed that. You know, there was one girl... She was a Chinita. I don't want to disrespect because I'm not sure what yeah. nationality she was. Yeah. I'm going to say I think she was Japanese. Yeah. She was from out here. I'm trying to remember exactly what city, but close to here, yeah. okay? And the other one I, uh, was from Netherlands, and that was her partner. Oh, really? The dope thing about technology today is that, you know, Norbert, you could be talking to somebody from Egypt. Yeah. Say you're a graffiti artist and yeah. you meet a graffiti artist from Egypt yeah. and you guys collab and you yeah. guys said, we're going to meet in Las Vegas. Yeah. And then you guys become a team to go ahead. I mean, that's just a beautiful thing. That's dope. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a good, yeah, you're right about that. That's the good thing about technology that you can do something like that. I mean, if I had to guess, I would that I would probably say Korean. And I say that because Koreans, they're, 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 they have a, this fighting style called, um, called uh, Taekwondo. Uh -huh. and, and and their style involves a lot of high kicking. I, is that Korean? Yeah, that's Korean. Okay. Uh, that, well, you know what? I'm getting that, it mixed up with Wing Chun. Yeah, well, that would be uh, Wing Chun would be Chinese, Chinese yeah. and then uh, uh, Judo would be Japanese. And but Karate the, is Japanese. But, and Karate is Japanese. Uh, but Taekwondo is Korean, and it's, it's very based with a lot of high kicking, high uh -huh. flying kicks. 
which which actually works out for them because they could do certain moves like the windmill or yeah. the um, I forget that's the only one I remember. Did, did you know that judo started with us Chicanos? You, you didn't know that? Judo. No, seriously. Oh, yeah. No, no. Wait, clarify. Please yeah. explain. Because one time Elaborate. I called this one guy out and he goes, yeah. you don't know who you're messing with, Holmes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to try that one. Well, you know what? There is a style of uh, judo in, in South America, but it's called Brazilian uh, judo. Oh, okay. Is it Brazilian judo? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. He's right. It is actually called Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You're right. And, but uh, jiu-jitsu and judo is kind of similar to each other, I want to say. But I think one of them is more about grappling. There's a lot of so many different styles. You're, there's a good movie out there. If you guys have never seen it, it's called Ung Bak. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, Ung the Bak. Muay Thai fighter. Yes. Okay. If you guys don't know, I'm going to spell that out for you. O-N-K-B-A-K. I only like the first one. Yeah. Well, how do I spell it? O-N-K? Uh, no. Ung Bak. Ung Bak, right? Say O-N-G. O-N-G. B-A-K, uh, right? B-A-K. Yeah. Ung Bak. Only the first one. That one's that, that one, badass. Wow, that was, the way that food moved, yes. that shit was crazy. That, that was dope. No, but let me ask you off the wall question because I know you do a lot of driving, so I want to ask you, what, what do you bump, bro, like when you drive around and when you're just out and it's, it's Norby's time? International music. Okay, give me an example. I don't um, know what international music I is. I don't know. I guess it's more like a jazz. But the international, like a, like the international music It's more like jazz like or like soulful jazz or um i don't want to say pop but it's more like a soul chill kind of vibe music do you know any artists yet uh some uh, one artist is from australia his name is rini r-i-n-i he uh he's a filipino guy from uh from australia he sings very well I, i if anything this guy reminds me of a young prince he could possibly be a a really if somebody ever brings him over here Cause he's very multi-talented when it comes to like instruments and singing. Kind of looks like him too, in in a way. Wow! But uh, and another one, there are a lot of different groups. Uh, one English group named Peps. Uh, they 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 they're pretty good, but it's all like very chill music. Cause okay. I, I just want to chill, you know. I I don't want to play anything too strong. Although although recently I've been. Catching myself playing a lot more Nirvana. I don't know why. I like Nirvana. I like Nirvana. And I think I think uh, the the anniversary of uh, Kurt Cobain's you know death. Yeah. Just recently happened. Also. Do you think he killed himself? Or do you think somebody? No, no, nah, nah, they off of that fool. They off that fool. Although it's crazy, it's crazy because uh, his wife recently made news because it, she was upset that uh, the the drummer from Nirvana, like I guess there's an estate for Nirvana. Uh huh. For or that, I mean, he's part of it, and I guess he decided he wanted to buy a Rolls Royce with, from that using that estate money. Oh wow! And she got mad. <laughs> like, why is this guy using that that money? That's yeah. my husband's money. But you know, he's the drummer. He, yeah. He's part. Of, he's part of the group. That's his money, also. I like listening to a lot of people call them oldies, but maybe it's soul music, bro. Whatever. I like Sam Cooke. I was bumping a lot of Sam Cooke Sam today. Cook? Yeah, bro, I was working out today, and I usually, like, work out to, like, yeah. hyped-up music, yeah. you know? But today, and I, I was, like, on the romantical side. All right, all right. I, I like that shit, bro. Sam Cooke, I, I think I, I don't know, I'm pretty sure. Remember, darling, you. Yeah, and I think I put a me. video about Sam Cooke talking about music. Yeah, bro. Like, uh, but from his time. I can't sing worth shit, but I can try. Oh, no, no, I thought you did well. I thought you did well. But I think he said something very important where he said, to be a real musician, a real artist, you have to be selfish. I don't. Know. I know a lot of selfish motherfuckers. But in the sense where, when you, the way you make your music, you 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 don't you don't copy everybody else's music. You don't try to be everybody that's trending. Okay, then that's a good way to put it. Yeah. But today, then there's a lot of a lot of people that are not selfish because they sound like everybody else. Well, that's crazy because he said that forty years ago. Yeah, and it's crazy that even those words are still relevant today. You know what, Norbert? Right. Let me make a quick example, and I think I this is what I think you're talking about because this is where I think music has gone. Yeah. Say I, I produce a, I have one keyboard. Yeah. It has piano, it has organ, it has bass lines. Yeah. It has strings, it has violins, it has yeah. everything. Yeah. And I do a twelve song album just on this one keyboard. Yeah. It takes off and it's a hit. Yeah. 
and then I give it to you. And then I say, here, Norbert, do your own album. You do 12 songs yeah. with the same keyboard. Yeah. It comes out. Yeah. It's banging. You pass it on to the next man. Yeah. Say that keyboard gets passed around to 500 people. Yeah. Are you going to mean to tell me that not all music's not going to sound the same? Well, at a certain point, yeah, it's gonna. There's yeah. only so many notes you can you can it, use. So many notes, so many sounds because it's the same keyboard. Yeah. Today, I see technology so easy. You know, there's there's programs out there that people can play and they give you bass lines already. Yeah. Now you can just manipulate the sounds, but it's the same bass line. Yeah. And I see people doing that today in the music. All sounds the same. Yeah. You know, I, I just think like what you said, you need to be creative, bro. Yeah. And that's the part where, where I think he was trying to say, you, you got to be selfish as, part, as far as uh, the way you create your music. You, you know, the way hip hop began, and I kind of shared this when, I, when we had that 50th hip hop anniversary. Yeah. And I shared a little bit about rap is that when we didn't have a live drummer. Okay. Like for an example, Walk This Way is originally from Aerosmith. Yeah. Okay. Run DMC used it. Yeah. Cap. So what they did, it just yeah. got two records. Yeah. Cap. Okay. That was dope. That was dope. But keep in mind, we didn't have drummers, so we had to use records. Yeah. They got creative with it. Yeah. Okay. You have to get creative with your music. Yeah. You have to get creative with your lyrics and anything you do. Well, yeah. I mean, even the guy from Nirvana. I think we said this before. The, yeah. the drummer took the drums from um, Cat Band. Cat Band. Yeah. Mm. I was like, holy shit! When you really hear it, you're like. <gasps> and who would have right. thought to use some funk shit from Cat Band over some grunge shit from yeah. Seattle? Yeah. That was a dope mix. That was a dope mix. It's crazy, but. It, it just goes to show you, it's okay to do that if you fucking... But you made it your own. You made it, you, you made it your own, yeah. Yeah. Because I would not have known that throughout my entire life if that dude hadn't said it. If he hadn't admitted. That's true. I, I thought that was crazy. You know the intro to Rodian Radio? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, that shit was real easy for me to make, okay? Yeah. yeah. That's four samples playing at, together at the same time. Four samples. Fuck. Three guys already offered me to buy that beat off of me. Really? And I said, just make your own. You know, you're paying guys 50 bucks a beat. Make your own because you're not going to like the price that I have. Yeah. You know, those are four samples that have been laying around out there and people never use them. Why? Because many times, not all the time, many yeah. times they don't have the creativity, bro. They That's don't have the, the imagination. That's the part right there. So, and everybody wants to buy these sample packs and they don't realize that a bunch of other people bought the same sample bought packs. Bought the same sample packs, bro. There was a guy that I'll be honest with you, Norbert, and I like to share this story because it's true. When I came back after 2000, 2017, yeah. keep in mind, I wasn't listening to music for a yeah. while. There was a producer that I was really looking up to, bro. Yeah. And I thought he was going to take it to the next level. Yeah. And the reason why he never took it to the next level, because I found out later that he was just buying sample packs. Ah. I had never heard of sample packs. Oh, okay, okay. He was buying samples already. That's crazy, though, man. It's, it's crazy, though, because back then, DJs used to, you know, used to use old records, get the samples from them. I think the only one that that I could recall that never really ever did that was uh that group uh, uh what's it called Af Africa Bam Bambaza or are oh, you talking about um I know it's Africa Bambada uh, Bamba uh, yeah talking about Planet Rock Planet Rock I think they they comp that was all from scratch yes and no yes and no yes and oh. no I'm gonna give you guys a little history lesson yeah. okay yeah yeah, yeah. Africa Bambada yeah stole that style. From white people in Europe. Wait, was it that 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 one with the bicycle thing? I'm gonna get hold on, ah, hold okay. on, pal. Okay, don't steal my thunder. <laughs> the group is called Craftwork. Okay, yeah. Look up a song called Trans Europe Express. Trans Europe Express. That's where they got Planet Rock from. But now he made it his own because if you take Planet Rock yeah. and Trans Europe Express, yeah. you can see where it was birthed from. Yeah, but. You know, but they came with a boom, boom, yeah. boom. You know, they came with their own shit. That's crazy, man. I want to be in a studio when motherfuckers start creating beats, man, just so I could hear the sounds. Because I think that's that's probably the best part about being in the studio, that you just get to play with a bunch of sounds and just hear them and hear them until 
you know, until you hear the one you like or it sounds the way you like. See, see, no, I'm glad you brought that up because let me tell you something. Here's what I tell people. You could be a fly in the wall in the studio with Dr. Yeah. Dre and DJ Quick producing a beat. Yeah. Now, you can walk away learning how they did that. Then you go home on your drum machine or on your program. Yeah. And if you don't have creativity, you're going to end up just copying what they did. Yeah. Now, if you have creativity, you saw how they did it, yeah. but now you're going to add your touch to it. Yeah. Because I always say that if you hear it here, you can put it right here, bro. Yeah. You know, so. And that, that, that's interesting because I think that translates to a lot of different, you know, um, creative uh, careers. Like even like uh, videography. I mean, you could learn how they do it, the way it is, but then they, you can't make it look like theirs. One know? perfect example is Esteban Orio. Yes. You know, people just think that he just shoots black and white pictures. Yeah. That's not it. No, no, it's not. You know, he still shoots with film. Yeah. And he still develops yeah. his own film. That's his style. Yeah. People were telling him, well, I'm, I'm, I, you know, he's no different from me. Bro, you got a Sony camera and he's still shooting a, a camera with film. Yeah. You know, you're, you could turn black and white pictures. You know, I could turn black and white pictures on my phone. Yeah. You know, his style was just different. That's what makes him unique. It is. Uh, and, and I know I know one other photographer that, the, actually two, uh, I think uh, Poet King photographer, he, he uses film also, and uh, LA Focus. Uh, these two guys are probably the, like, are the ones that are probably going to come up later on. Right. And it may, when uh, Esteban, you know, it retires or just stops. Right. You know, there, there. He has a lot of other people that look up to him. Yeah. That eventually are going to be at that level also. So you know, much love to those guys. You know, uh, and first and foremost, I'm going to give a shout out to Esteban because I've interviewed Esteban. I, I think I had him here like four or five times, bro. Bro, he's hilarious, man. He is hilarious. He's hilarious. That awesome guy is dope as fuck. Awesome sense of humor, bro. Yeah. You know, um, but now, but it it, it pays. It pays to be unique. It pays to be yeah. different, bro. Yeah. And that's what made everybody in the 80s different. Yeah. Today, I like to look for different, bro. Yeah. You know, there's groups, bro. There's a group. There's the Chicano. I believe the Chicano. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure exactly where they're at. Yeah. But they sing, like, music. Like, they took it back, like, New Order, Soft Cell, almost like that old 80s new wave. Yeah. And I've been DMing them. I've been DMing them because... I like different. Yeah. I want to get them before anybody else gets them or anybody else blows yeah. up. Don't say Be their names, Tony. I know because I recognize their talent, bro. And you don't know how many times I've DM'd them. Yo, I want to get you on the platform. Yeah. Yo, they only have like 5,000 followers. Yeah. But their creativity and their ideas are dope. Yeah. Please be different, everybody. You know what? Nobody ever made a difference being like everyone else. Oh, yeah. That's facts. That's facts. You know. So when somebody says, what, do you think you're fucking better? No. I'm not better than no. anyone. I'm just different. Different, exactly. And you know what? I forgot to mention one more photographer. Scandalous. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is it good to see his camera? Jesus. I mean, I, he he does have a... He, I did see his fucking camera. I, I'm not going to lie. It's you get a, jealous? It's a, no, I was <laughs> fucking... Like, it's a fucking... T but aside from the camera... The history he has with, you know, everything that is, yeah. that is West Coast rap. I mean, most people don't realize how many of the, his pictures they've seen. <laughs> that, and he's the one that provided like 90% of the pictures that I'm going to be showing at Scanlon Studio because he was Steve Yano's photographer. Bro, when I saw his, the, his, the pictures he, he took, I'm like, I've seen that one. I, holy shit. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I was shocked at how many... I, it was extremely impressive. I mean, if uh, if uh, Esteban Oreo was the black and whites, I think Scanlon's was the the colors. Yeah, yeah, bro. Other than that, bro, how has your week been going? I know you weren't you were not here on Sunday, no, was, but I know you were tuning in with me, yes, marvelous. Definitely, definitely. We had a great time. We kicked a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge. We couldn't take too many phone calls. We couldn't get to all the, the questions, but we're going to get to the phone calls in just a bit because yeah. we're going to take at least over an hour with the phone call. Nice, nice. Everybody who wanted to call in can now call in tonight and get your question in. Hey. You know, uh, me personally, if you got a hip-hop question, I'm down to answer it. You know, you got any type of question, cool. You know what? Yeah. Um, you got anything for Norbert, cool. Let's you, do it. You got swinger questions, go for it. He'll answer those, okay? <laughs> Because he's still swinging. <laughs> Norbert, um, as of right now, we might be in Arizona next Friday and Saturday. Oh, shit. Okay. You I'm just letting here. you know. All right. Um, I just have to square things away. And I'll find out by this Friday if we're going to be at the Arizona Super Show. Oh. Okay. All right. Now, we're already booked. Yeah. we're. I'm already booked. It's already booked. It's already booked, but... 
there's just some things that I need to take care of if I'm still going to go. Oh, okay. So. All right. So well, stay tuned. So if anybody from Arizona is watching, you know, call in. Maybe we can meet up there. Maybe we can meet back, you know, at a bar somewhere. I'll buy you guys a shot. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to meet my fans. Definitely. I truly do. I, I mean, I, I got a hat the last time we were there. Yeah, bro. bro <laughs> last time I was there. And I, some wings and, and pizza. Wasn't it Chicano brand that uh, hooked oh, us yeah, up? Oh, yeah, yeah, Chicano brand. Yeah, so, shout out to Chicano brand. Shout out to Chicano brand. They give us a bunch of stuff. You know what's funny, bro? That even though I was up there DJ for high C, I got recognized more than he did because of the podcast. Oh, yeah. That's the crazy part, bro. Bro, when they stopped me, they'd say, hey, where's Tony? I'm like, he's right over there. Go, you can like, they him. recognized Norbert, <laughs> and they were asking for Marvelous. So, Arizona, yeah, yeah, they were much love for Marvelous. To, to Arizona. So, I think I think this is going to be, I'm not sure, I think it's the Cardinal Stadium. Yeah. I think. Oh, fuck. I, I don't really know all the details of that. Yeah. But Friday, I'll have everything. And then I got some more coming up during the summer. Hells, yeah. So, Gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely gonna promote it here because I want all my fans to come out, man. Support. Definitely. You know, so anyways, Norbert, um, how has your week been going? Everything good? I know, uh, like I said, you weren't here yeah. Sunday, so I didn't see you till Oh, from- you know what? It's been good. You know what? Oh, I and I want to give a special shout out to Lily Flor. Uh mm-hmm. she had a she invited me to her birthday uh, party. It was really dope. It was like a who's who in Chicano history. I swear to God. Really? <laughs> yeah. That was Saturday, huh? Yeah, yeah. I even uh saw um uh, Fuck, I'm horrible with names, but the, the founder of Radiotron. Mm. Carmelo Alvarez. Carmelo Alvarez, yes. I, I, he was there. And, and it's always cool when you meet these people outside of the, their um, work environment. Because, yeah. you know, work environments, everyone's more serious. Yeah. Everybody conducts themselves more properly. But when it's, a, it's a party. Everybody's cool. Everybody's chill. You just talk about a lot of current events and history and it, it, i'm not gonna lie it, it was really cool i felt like a student amongst many teachers as far as a chicano in la chicano history in la well that's a good thing because you are able to absorb that when you have an ego yeah you know what i'm saying and you don't humble yourself you don't learn shit no you don't and you I, don't. when i was there, i was like wow that's this is a lot of information that yeah. I mean, wow. There's L- and I, I heard a lot of history about LA and the, the radio stations that Chicanos were uh, a part of. Yeah. I was like, fuck. Yeah. I mean, these things are so underground or just don't, don't get enough light. But yeah, look at Ch- Chicanos were doing a lot during the 90s. What, what is the name of that museum? Because I'm going to be going, bro. Uh, across the street from Olvera Street. Remember, we, we did a Sunday oh, yeah, in the yeah. park. I think it's La, 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 La Olvera. No, is it La Olvera? No, Overo, that's the name of Overo Street, La Placita. Oh, La, La Plaza. But across the street, La, La Plaza? The, the museum. They're having the Olympic Auditorium exhibit. Yeah, I think it's called La, La Plaza. Okay, probably, but look I think it it, they're giving a, a free exhibit, and uh, I'm going to be going, and if anybody is from L.A., or maybe you want to come to L.A., they're giving a free exhibit of the Olympic Auditorium. Julio Cesar Chavez fought there, Macho Camacho fought there, uh, De La Hoya fought there. Andre the Giant fought there, like yeah. a bunch of history. Oh, yeah. So if you like L.A. history, this is going to be the place for you. They had a lot of Mexican uh, luchadores yes. that fought at the auditorium. What, what, what's that, Alex? Go ahead. It's, it's called La Plaza de Cultura. Uh, Cultura y Artes. Yeah. La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, okay? Def, it's right across the street from Overa Street, and I believe it's free. Okay, so go check it out. And it's a really, really dope exhibit. I think they're, I forgot what day they're opening it. But um, I think it's mostly open uh, during. Uh, no, no, but this ex- pre- uh, this exhibit for the Olympic Auditorium. Yeah, just for the Olympic Auditorium. Well, they had it when we were there. No, this is going to be supposedly more. Really? Yeah, because oh. I know they had masks, they had caves, they had the boots. Ah, okay. The Golden Era Los Angeles Boxing, the Olympics versus the Forum. Uh, it's going to be April 14, twenty twenty four. Uh, it's free. See, three p.m. See, eighteenth and Grand, the Olympic Auditorium Boxing Expo. Definitely go check that out because the, the Olympic Auditorium now is it's like a Korean church now. Oh yeah, they got Korean Jesus on the on, yeah, the, on exactly. the wall. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But the exhibit, definitely check it out. Uh, I'm definitely gonna go. Oh, so they're actually using the actual auditorium? No, that I know of. Wait, eight eighteenth and grand. Okay, so that's not across Wait. the street from Movero? Wait, where's is five oh one North Main? I don't know, bro. Oh, fuck. I'm, I'm live. This, I can't this, look it up. This, uh, well, this is confusing. The flyer is very confusing because it gives that main street and then it's, it gives 18th and Grand. 
then maybe you're just going to have to call. It's just a little confusing there. All right. All right. What, whatever. Either but, way, either way. That, that, that place is dope, man. I, 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 have to, I have to go back also to check it out. All good. Before we start taking calls, Norbert, anything else you want to uh, share that may, in case maybe people may want to tap in and call in or whatever? Well, I, uh, I did do some draws for uh, my, my channel, Run the Fade. Uh, if you guys are interested, check it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, um, tell them once again the name of your channel where they can find it. It's uh, Run the Fade Podcast. We're uh, on YouTube. On YouTube, and uh, it's very entertaining. <laughs> I have a lot of fun doing that one. It's, it's like the Mexican TMZ. <laughs> yeah. It, it, wait, no, no. Or that's like the Mexican what? Inquirer. No, no. Star. I, 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 it's okay. Let's go with that. Inside, Inside edition. Inside edition. There you go. I, I like that inside. Edition. I was gonna say Reader's Digest. No, no, inside edition is a lot better. That that was a good okay. one. <laughs> Norbury's edition. I haven't seen that in show in the longest time either. But okay, okay, that'll work. But, uh, um, other than that, Friday I'll be on Freaky Tales again. Hey. Uh, I already shared why I couldn't go on last week, but um, yeah, Friday Freaky Tales, and then Sunday we'll be back. But uh, other than that, um, uh, Alex, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and uh, put the phone lines on. Let me go ahead and connect. So once again, everybody, if you got the balls, make the calls. Hey. Let's go ahead and let's get these calls going on. We have a lot of missed calls. Are we on? Already? We had, no, we, we had a lot of missed calls on Sunday because oh. so many people wanted to get through. So That's what she said. Yeah, exactly. Hey. So once again, if you want to go ahead and call, the phone lines are now open. The phone number is up. And it's up, and it's up, and it's, it's up, up, and it's up. up. Okay. Hey. So, the show is called Calls with the Wizard, so usually you're supposed to be calling. So Aside from that, uh, we could pick up. Uh, well, did, uh, did the eclipse affect you in any way, Tony? Yes. I ate lunch, and I fell asleep. <laughs> I had a food coma. I don't know why, but I grew two inches more. You did? Yeah. From where? Hey. Hey. There's only one way you can find out. You see where I, he likes to go with the conversation? He he's trying to steer me in that direction, <laughs> but I'm not playing for his tricks. Not with his last year's Prada shoes. There is, there is a video say that show. There's a video that's training that's showing something like leaving the sun, like some really? weird uh, entity. Hmm, People okay. want to say it was a demon. I don't know. It looked like a damn helicopter to me, bro. I don't know. Okay. Caller 484, call back. Call it, call it, 484, call back. All right, let's see. If not, I'm going to call you back. Here we go. Norbert, go ahead and get it. Call her your name, and Where are you calling from? Call her. Hello, Norbert. Hello. Um, hello. Is this that, is um, Bosley you, from the Cosmos. Bosley. Bosley, hey. how you doing? I usually hear, hear more of you on Freaky Tales. Yeah, good to hear you. Right. <laughs> I love that one, too. But... I had to call in today. All right. What do you have for so, us? So, uh, Tony, um, I, I'm glad that you guys touched on that part where um, these rapper are, artists have to be a little bit more creative. Yes. Mm. So, um, tell me if I'm wrong thinking this way. I think that Kitana rap died because. Um, the beat got a little too repeated. Mm. Um, I've always thought that if they take an already an existing song, if they don't get creative enough with it, and they just sound a little too repeated, it gets boring. Yeah. And it doesn't show their original talent. Yeah. And they're all the same repeated. And um, I don't see, I don't see like, the creative part in it, like the beat or the lyric or the concept or the message. Mm. And I think that Kitano Rap only reached a very small group. I think if, if they get a little bit more creative, they can reach other groups, other types of people. Mm. And um, not just a, a specific group that can only keep them, let them go up so so high, and then bring them down 
Do you, do you see what I'm saying? No, I know exactly no what you're saying. No, you know what? I mean, let's be honest, Norbert. There's only so many times we can use more bounds, cutie pie, and atomic dog. Oh, man, man, that, that's not the worst of it. It's exactly. when they try to use oldies in a horrible way. They don't even try to really mix it. That, and there's so many, so many songs we can do talk box on, you know, and we just, we need to be more creative instead of copying people. That's all we're doing, bro. Well, what I don't like hearing is rappers saying that we made it, fam. I'm like, bro, you're still living in the same place. What the fuck you well, mean you made well, it? And a lot of Chicano rap. <laughs> I'm not going to say all, but a lot of Chicano rap has turned into gangster rap. But all they're doing is talking about the hood, how many yeah. bullets they took, how many years they've exactly. done, how many burpees, yeah. and how many spreads they've eaten. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, so uh, yes. so we don't have nobody to blame but, but ourselves why Chicano rap has not gone. And that's part of what we're talking about in the documentary, Norbert. Yeah. But the part that I'm covering is more on the positive side yeah. because of how it all started. Yeah. So... The roots. Yes, the roots. Yeah. Uh, speaking about the documentary, Tony, I think that um, you you are already kind of working on something like that because every time you interview these rappers, you're catching part of their lives. And even if you are not, you know, working on that just yet, you're somewhat already working. You're ready. Thanks. Bringing Thanks. their personal stories the public and to the followers i don't know why are they complaining you know you know thank you you know and thank you for that you know th there's times that people like to ask me questions like how many people have you put on how many chicanos have you put on how many mexicans have you put on well i've already have over 300 interviews how many more do i have to interview before <laughs> you stop saying how many mexicans <laughs> have you put on exactly. you know look, look i'm gonna say this respectfully yeah. uh, honestly respectfully before Rodium Radio, who was interviewing Night Owl? Rest in peace. Before Rodium Radio, who was interviewing Little One? Who was interviewing Shadow? You know what I'm saying? Right. There, there was a lot of artists mm -hmm. that I brought to the table that I shined light on and resurrected their careers. You and, know, and, a lot of them, bro. And, wow. you, and you gave all these other platforms uh, guests. You know, so yeah. they can grow also. 90% yeah. of yeah. my guests here. It was their first time ever uh -huh. doing an interview. It was their first time. Wow. But you know what? I never asked for a thank you. All I ever said, if you've been a day one, is if, if you walk through that door, make sure you leave the door open for the next man. And to me, mission accomplished. That's all I wanted. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to ask you, that makes you have, um, um, LA is the, uh, the capital that, Gangster capital of the nation. Did you do that? Um, what, what, what do you mean? The, the the track? Are you talking about the track or You're talking about the, the music? The, the, yes. The music. Oh, that's for the news of Norby's. Oh, the news. The news. Yes, did you hear that? yes. Well, that was my idea, but I'm going to give credit to the hip hop Jedi because I told him to put it together. Yeah. But that was my. I pitched him all the idea, oh. and he put it together. So I will both take credit, mm. but he did put it together. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it sounds great. Thank you. Also, oh, just one more thing. Um, uh, the um, do you remember that song? Mm, I can't remember the band. It it was Black Eyes. Uh, most of my mu favorite music comes from Black Eyes <laughs> rappers. Yeah, like all um, of us. Um, it, it, the the lyrics say "the fly," something "the fly." It came out back in '85, and it it was great, but it didn't make it. Uh, as as big as Sap and Roger, even though it should have. I can't remember the name of the band. No, I, could, I could tell you the name I of the band. Know you what is it? The Fly was from Dr. Dre, Lonzo, DJ Yella, Clientele, the World Class Wrecking Crew. Oh, really? The Fly. Uh huh. Mm. The Fly. Yeah, that's yes, it. That's it. <laughs> Somebody that knew, I knew you would know it. That would be Tony. You, you got a ear for this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know what's funny? Right. You, 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 you could kind of almost do a beat for Tony from a song, and most of the time he'll 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 be able to like guess it right. It's yeah, crazy. The world class wrecking crew, the fly. Look that up. You'll you'll enjoy it. The world class wrecking wrecking crew. Okay. 
got it. Okay. Because I couldn't find it. I kept on uh, getting other fly songs, but not the right one. But that's the one. That's the one. So, okay. Thank you so much, Tony. Okay. And uh, you've got such a great ear. And the reason why I started following you is um, because I noticed that you were already interviewing rappers. And, and I just, you know, sit down and watch it for a little bit. And I'm listening to their stories and I'm thinking, oh, my God, they're human, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. They, so it's great to hear their, their stories. And thank you for bringing that to us. You're a great blessing. Thank, thank you. you so much. Have thank a blessed you. night. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bro. You know, like for an example, Spanky Loco yeah. brought him here. There was a lot of people that I brought here, bro. And I'm thankful they came through. Let's get this phone call. Yeah. Call her your name, it's and where great. are you calling from? Tony A. Caesar from Paris. Ah, Caesar shit. from Paris. How you doing, my brother? What's up, Caesar? We're doing good. We're doing good. We're blessed. We're still alive after the eclipse. Nobody turned inside out. Nobody. So let's <laughs> <keep it pushing. laughs> yeah. You know, great, great, uh, great interview, uh, Gangster Chronicles. Tony, uh, conducting yourself as always with class, and uh, you know, I mean, letting people little, letting people know a little bit of what they didn't know. Mm. Yes, uh, but I got another question. I got a, I got another follow up question to that. But first, I want to say uh, to your co-host Norby, yes, keep sir. up the bad work. Yes, sir. As always, um, one thing you did take me back, and I am surprised. Uh, Norberto knows the anniversary of dead celebrities on the dot. But hey. for some reason, for some reason though, Norbert, yes. you can't recall where the woman's clitoris is located at. Bro. <sighs> you know, I swear. I mean, I mean. It, it it kills me. It kills me. The last couple of episodes that you didn't take calls, you were just choking on on the women questions, bro. And you know, and on a side note, fucking fucking blue devil, blue devil better not better not be listening because if he takes notes, he's gonna finally find a way to shut you up. It's to talk about pussy, and he got your beat. But just, just, Don't let him just know. Don't let him know. You made the, the insider from you know Neil Rollins from Caesar from Paris to you, Norberto. Now back to Tony A. Tony A. We were talking about uh, we're talking about hip hop. <laughs> yes, it's your neighbor. We're talking about a great, 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 great podcast. Yeah, run the fade. Let's Appreciate still you. hope that people still see the big picture of this podcast. How big this podcast could go? Yes, sir. Everybody, subscribe, share, run the fade. That's right. Now, Tony A. Um, let's talk hip hop. Um. Let's see. I want you to maybe, if you have the time, take us back because when you were deep in the hip hop, you were uh, touring, right? You've been here and there, yes. been around the world, and I, yeah, yeah. You've been all that. How about take us to a particular time, Tony, where you saw, so you went somewhere to where the music that you guys were bringing, you know, the style, the music, the cutting, the scratching, the magic, to give me a place where, where, Somebody came to you and said, and you just totally changed their life, Tony. Give me one of those stories that nobody's even heard. A good World Room Radio story that, Tony A., your music, where you actually did, moved a lot of people, changed a lot of people's lives, brought them into hip-hop, Tony. We want to hear that. Damn. You know, I, I have a couple of places, bro, where, where people have actually came up to me and I'm in my early 20s, shook my hand and had tears in their eyes, bro. And I'm going to tell you why and where. And I think it's important for me to share where this took place. You know, for us down here in L.A. 2024 to be claiming that we're this and we're that and we're from the blue and they're from the red and we're from the south and we're from the north. We understood that in the early 90s, it was business. The majority of my love and the majority of my touring was all up north. Mm, wow, really? And let me tell you something. That's why I received my most love. I get it. Okay? Yeah. I, I was Sacramento, San Jose, you know, uh, Modesto. And every time I went up on stage, I want to say this, because the majority of the people that I'm, that I'm DJing for, where everybody was there, was pretty much predominantly black. Yeah. Unless I ended up doing shows with Cypress Hill. Yeah. Or with Kid Frost. And yeah. I'm talking about up north. Yeah. Okay? Uh, uh, every once in a while, I do some shows with Lighter Shade uh, or with uh, Mellow. Yeah. But the majority of the time was all black artists, and I'm yeah. really the only white guy <laughs> on stage. Okay. Yeah. So when it was mm. my turn mm. to go on to DJ for High C, Second to None, AMG, Quick, I'm up there plugging in my turntables. And I remember girls 
were always trying to get my attention. And I, when I finally said, like, what's up? The number one question was like this. Hey, are you Chicano? And I was like, yeah. And they go, all right. Hey. Now, why do you think they were saying all, mm-hmm. all right, Norbert? I guess they were very supportive. Not only very supportive, but also very happy that one of us was up on stage. Oh, I don't know why I thought that it was it was Absolutely. black girls saying that to you. Yeah. So backstage, when I yeah, would meet again, Tony, again, Tony, yeah. you're asking them about girls. Not come on. <laughs> I, I, well, go oh, on, Tony. I'm sorry. Yes. Go go. <laughs> hey, just well, I, I need Christ. a girlfriend. So so backstage. Oh my god. I'm meeting couples yeah. like boyfriend and girlfriend, yeah. possibly my age or a little bit older. Yeah. And it's usually the guys, bro, that had tears in their eyes. Yeah. Hey, bro, when I saw you on the cover, I was happy that one of us made it. You know, and now keep in mind, I'm like 23. Yeah. And I'm trying to understand that, bro. Because I saw Frost and I'm seeing proper dose coming up. I'm seeing lighter shade of brown, but it's only a handful of us. Yeah. So it took a while for me to consume that, to yeah. under, fully understand that. But I always <laughs> like... Took pictures with them. I always like, how did you make it? And I just said, I just started DJing. I started doing mixtapes. I pretty much would give everybody my story in a nutshell. Yeah. That I'm no different from you. You can do it yourself as yeah. well. Yeah. You know, so uh, I think seeing tears in people's eyes. And I think one of the most, two of my most, at least for me, humbling moments was when they said we had an uh, uh, um, in store, that means when the artist goes to a record store like the warehouse, yeah. Music Plus, etc., and the fans are gonna buy your record, so they're there to get an autograph, meet you, take a picture. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, this was my first one. Yeah, and we were up north, and I thought in my small brain, ain't nobody gonna show up. Yeah, ain't nobody. There's no way in hell anybody's gonna show up. Yeah, the line was around the corner, bro. Uh, that's that's dope. And I'm gonna tell you this: I had to ask my manager, Steve. Yeah. What are they here for? <laughs> I'm being honest with you, okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, here's another one. And this was in Sacramento. We were performing at a club. The limo picks us up and uh, uh, at the hotel. We go to the front of the club. High C tells the driver, do you, have a, do you have a back door so we can go in? And I said, man, ain't nobody going to recognize us, bro. That's what I said. Ain't nobody yeah, going to recognize yeah. us. And that, so I told the limo, drop me off right here. I'll walk through the front door, take him through the back. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. But there was already a, a line around the club. Okay. Okay. So the, the, the limo driver gets off, opens up the trunk, takes out my turntables. I grab him. And as I start walking to the club, I'm not, not, not lying. A mob of girls start rushing me. That's him. That's him. And I could not believe it, bro, that they were there to see me and high C. I thought they were just there for the club. Yeah. Even though we were performing that night, they yeah. knew it. But I just couldn't get through my mind, bro, that we were selling out clubs. Damn. But, but let me tell you something, okay? They took off my hat. They were untying my shoes. My pants were unbuttoned. Jeez. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I couldn't believe it, bro. But we rocked all their motherfucking shows, bro. That's fucking And I love them fans, bro. Hell yeah. That's so, crazy, man. But I, I totally get it because you're, you're just living it. I'm just living it. And those people made me feel blessed, bro. They yeah. humbled me, bro. So. I yeah. thank those people. Yeah, that's a that's a real fucking uh, reality check when that happens. It is. It is, bro. Be- Look, I want to say this to every artist out there. Stop trying to impress L.A. Yeah. Stop trying to impress. Get out of L.A. Well, that's one of the reasons why I listen mostly more to music, international music. Yes. That that happens to be English. Definitely think international market because if you release good product, you know who's going to come knocking? Japan, Europe, Canada, Australia. The whole world's going to come knocking, Shit. but you're too busy trying to impress dudes here in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. So, Caesar, I hope hopefully I answered your Absolutely. question. Absolutely. You did and much more. Thank you very much, Tony, as as one of the big winners and as one of the men that ain't afraid to admit that I shed a tear when I first had when I first heard the scratchy, man. Oh, but, and, and, and it does. You do touch people with your talent. And it's not that we're all up on your nuts. It's not. It's when. People have talent and they share it. Imagine that. He shared it for the world. People everywhere hear his music, hear his cuts, mm. try to learn from this man yeah. and what he's doing. Tony A, hats off. He's from Paris and I'm out. Salute to everybody. Rodeo Radio, baby. Thank you, my bro. Oh, Thank yeah. you. So, yeah. hey, and he's right, though, because I think, remember when we saw that picture of your, I think it was one of your, 
your CDs in Japan. Yeah. People, somebody was sending it over yeah. there. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> like, bro. No. Exactly. But but yeah, uh, dude, I had I've had a lot of a lot of success, made a lot of money up north. And let me tell you something. Uh, um, well, let's get this call right here. Call her your name and where uh, are you calling from? Hey, how you doing, man? It's uh, King Mexico from Brooklyn, New York. King What's Mexico. up, my brother What's from up, Brooklyn, man? New York? What's up, man? Over here, just chilling. Just wanted to ask you some questions. Just I see, um, yeah, we're going to have a live. I was like, yo, let me jump on. Hells yeah. And so I was like, yo, what's a book that you've read, right? And then you look back and you're like, damn, that was a good book. And then another book that you've read as a child and look back and like, damn, that's a crazy ass dumb book. I don't even know how I enjoyed it as, as a youngster. Oh, you're asking me what book? Yeah. What book? I, I really didn't start reading and I'm honest with you. And this is where I look back at my past. And I think to myself, I don't know how smart I could have been in school because I never applied myself. Yeah. Uh, I always say when I was in the, in the club at 11 years old, all I thought about was music and women after that. I didn't, think, I didn't care about school anymore, bro. But it wasn't until I got in my early 20s that I started reading. Yeah. But it was more on history books. And then after I read about four or five history books, and those history books pertain or pertaining to like Assyria, Egypt. Uh, I shared this uh, Persia, Greece, Rome, and eventually the history of Israel. And then I was given the Bibles, uh, King James 1611, uh, Bible and I and I read that as a history book. I didn't read it as a religious book, and that's the book. To be honest, with you that I still read to this day. Other than that, I've read a lot of Christian authors like C.S. Lewis, uh, Leonard Ravenhill, etc. But there's a lot of good books out there. But I was also told by a wise man who owned a bookstore, and I never heard anybody else tell me this. But he said it. Not every book should be opened. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's and, and I thought about that. He goes because whatever you put in here. He said, that's why you go, that's why there's a lot of guys in jail that read everything. When they come out, they come out more confused. Oh, okay. Well, and I, I can see that. I said, really? And he goes, yeah, he goes, not every book should be, should be open. For an example, let me just give you an example. I knew a buddy that went to jail. He studied with Hindus. He studied with Muslims. He studied with Mormons. He studied with Jehovah's Witnesses. He studied with Judaizers. Okay. When he went in, he was a Christian. He came back uh, um, confused. I don't know what to believe in now. Damn. That's crazy. I mean, I could see that. That's a lot of information, a lot of knowledge. It's yeah. really difficult to get, get a grasp on, well, what's, what's the right one? No, you're right. You're right. And what might work for me might not work for you. Yeah. So, but since you asked, my, asked me that question, that's my answer. Yeah. My, my favorite books uh, started and ended with uh, Super Fudge and uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yo, that's dope. Classics. Do, oh, word. do you remember Jacques Cousteau? The, the he, guy that used to sail down in Baja? Jacques Cousteau. Like he was an author, bro. No, he was a sailor. He was but, a, but there were books about but, him. Oh. There were books about him. And I used to remember, I don't know if you're, you're a timeless spirit. Yes. When I was in elementary, every month they would give us a, a list of books that if you wanted to buy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Scholastic. Sco there you Scholastic. go. Scholastic, so yes, yes. Those yes. are the books, probably my earliest recollection, bro, of books that I would buy and read and but after that i didn't really care to fuck man no that that shit was crazy i'm not gonna lie though tony i was i was so poor i couldn't afford any of those fucking books <laughs> that, that's crazy i was like i think a discount <laughs> there you go no because you, you had to, to order you them. had to order them you have to you give have to them the money yeah yeah i'm like but you know what let, let me ask you caller what about you man what do you like to read me um basically improving books on how to look at life from a different perspective yeah, and uh, just isolating your thoughts and just knowing where you stand as an individual, right? So a book for me as a child that I found entertaining and it was an adult I read it was Catcher in the Rye, right? Okay. I was like, I was not, I was like, yo, why do I like this book as a kid, right? But I, I understand it's rebellion against the system. But then when you read it as an adult, it doesn't, it doesn't really have a good outlook in life, you know? Mm. There's like a liberal, and then as you get older, you become a, 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 a conservative. Yeah. yeah. Like so you that's know, what I would, I would compare Catcher in the Rye. I, okay. I think they used that movie in that, that one cons conspiracy movie with Mel Gibson. I'm not as sure. It's one of the books that people that uh, get uh, mind-controlled. 
They, they, they would have a habit of buying that book and mm. just having you it. You know what book I'm not interested in reading because a lot of people tell me it's good and it's not good? Kama Sutra? No. Uh, I think it's, <laughs> is it The Art of War? Oh, it's kind of the same thing. Really? Yeah. Okay, I've never read that, so I can't tell you. But the stuff that people have told me is pretty much, if I'm correct, Norbert, or maybe somebody else can correct me, it teaches you how to manipulate people. Ah, uh, no, the art of war doesn't do that. The art of war, it, it, it's more nah. about understanding your, your enemy and understanding yourself. There you go. There you go. But now, does it cause you to see everyone like an enemy? Yes. No. <laughs> For okay, me, yes. you're saying yes For and me. no. See, that's, me, yes. that's the mixed reviews that I've gotten. Yeah. I mean, it makes it that's the thing. That's the beautiful thing. When you read a book, everybody's not going to be on the same page. That, that, and it's that. not going to read the same and understand Very the true. same concept. Very true. True. Perspective. Just like life, right? Like, mm -hmm. just like currently, right? Mm -hmm. Just to throw it out there, just to see what you guys think about it. So let's say when you have a conflict with individuals, right? Mm -hmm. it, in their head, they see it one way, right? Yeah. And there's always three, three, um, three levels, right? There's yours, there's the middle, and there's their truth, right? Mm -hmm. And the funny part is that sometimes one of the parties will never agree or never see the light in the middle. Mm. Yeah. And they're stuck in their old ways, mm. which, is, which is crazy, you know what I mean? When you really analyze the stuff, it's like, I know what I went through, what you went through. We went through together. But you see it in a different light. Mm. And it's kind of confusing when you try to explain that to people. And yeah. they see it all different. Uh, yeah. Perspective is it's, you know it's I mean? crazy. Yeah. It, it really can go anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. All good, color. I'm kind of curious. That What made you ask that question? Huh? I said, I'm kind of curious. What made you ask that question? That's a good question, though. I appreciate it. Yeah, that question comes from, you know... If, if you happen to stumble into my page, there's a little bullshit going on. So, mind you, not, nothing was ever said on my behalf. Yeah. But, you know, when you poke a bear, you keep poking the bear, eventually you're going to get a response. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, that that's how it usually goes. I mean, and that's the, that's the bad thing about people that, uh, you know, people that are collected, people that, you know, have no egos, people that can push through. But you're always going to have that one motherfucker that's going to keep poking at you because that's all they know how to do. All good. All right, caller. I appreciate you calling in from Brooklyn, New York. That was yeah. Hopefully, I'll be going up there soon. Um, hopefully, if that's not before up. summer, during summer, I'll be up there. So, thank you, my Yo, bro. You got you to gotta get the food out here, man. Get that pizza light. Oh, hey. definitely. Definitely, man. You know, uh, do, do you stay anywhere near Best Eye? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where I was. Actually, the last time I was there, I shot a little video right there at Bo uh, Biggie's mural. That was dope. Oh, that's on right there by Fulton and stuff, by the A-line and stuff. Yeah. Hey. It was quite an experience, bro, But because to imagine that his body, bro, in, in that hearse passed by when everybody was right there chilling, deep, when his mom took him back, back to his house, you know? Oh, that's dope, man. Yeah, bro. I want to try to do that. I want to try to get in nah. one of those vans where they, they, they film you. Yeah. All good, yeah, my but brother. The crazy part is, it's changed so much. Bro. Yes, it's like Brooklyn from when Biggie was there to now, it's so gentrified. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. bro. It is. Yeah. It, it truly, Night truly is. Night and day, definitely. It, it truly is. Cause that's my boy, all, Big, right, man. Uh, all right, my brother, you stay blessed. Yeah, man. Peace. Thanks, man. Right. Appreciate that. Uh, Breakbeat Lou, who was in my uh, documentary, he told me that he said, "Bro, he said it's not what it was." I mean, that's what's happening to LA, also. True, you know. True. Uh, okay, everybody, uh, let's take these calls. We're trying to keep them under five minutes, but so far these calls have been great. So thank you for that. What were we talking about earlier? About the music, about DJing. No me recuerdo. About no. you doing that, traveling uh, up north. Up I, north. I, I got a, a lot of love. Oh yeah, you know what I was gonna say? I, I noticed that um, the northern music, the no northern rap, was more on on. And I heard another rapper say this: it was more about player stuff. It's always been. Yeah, that's that's what it's always been. And I think that's what makes it more fun. I mean, I, yeah, I remember one of my favorite rappers up there was Rapping Forte. I think he's from the north, right? He's, Rapping Forte. Yeah, he's from up there. Spice One, MC Hammer's of up course, there. Puff. I mean, uh, uh, Pac. Yeah. Pac, not Puff. Pac. Pac? Tupac. Well, Baltimore, New York, and then Bay, and then yeah. L.A. 
So I want to say he's New York, but everybody calls him West Coast. So did you ever see that video that's trending of uh, the this one actor? His name is uh, I think Michael White, or he's this black actor, uh, martial artist. No, no, let me get this phone call. Call her your name, or where are you calling from? Uh, Mo from the North Bay. What's up, my brother? How you doing? What's up, man? What's up? What's up, guys? How you guys doing tonight? I'm just chilling tonight, man. Taking some phone calls. Good. Man. Um, you know what? I love talking to hip hop. I love talking books. Whatever, whatever's on your mind, you can ask us, bro. Yes, sir. All right, Tony. I got a question for you. All right. Um. Um. Do you believe in the the flat Earth, or would you believe on the on the Earth? Mm. And I'll, and I'll I'll follow it up with a a question. Okay. Uh, follow up question. That's it. You know, a lot of people tend to ask me this question because my co-host, Marvelous Inc., he believes in the flat Earth. As of right now, I do not believe in the flat earth. It's going to take a lot of convincing, a lot of convincing, a lot of proof to, to make me believe that there is a flat earth. Now, people like to use the Bible, say that the Bible describes a flat earth. So people like to say that the Bible is, is around earth. To me, ultimately, if say that one day I did decide to say, I do believe in the flat earth, Norbert. Does that really change anything? Well, if, I mean, the Romans also and the Greeks also believed the earth was flat. Okay, but, their history. but you've never talked to any of the Greeks or any Romans, right? No. Okay. But what I'm saying is this. Would that change anything? Like, mm. really? You know what? At this point, Tony, a lot of the things that the school system taught me, I am starting to really not believe. Right, right. Like, for instance, the, the whole thing about the sizes of the continents, where yeah. they make the north look huge and the south look tiny, and it's actually the opposite. Yeah. According to actual satellite images, it shows the continents south of us are right. actually much larger. And, the, right. you know, that's why it's hard to believe. Okay. Caller, uh, so to answer your question as of right now, no, I do not b believe in the flat earth. Well, what about you, Norby? Uh At the moment, I, yes, I, I do believe it's more flat because I really haven't seen any actual proof that it's round. I mean, mm -hmm. NASA could show as many images as they want, but at the end of the day, it's NASA. It's, it's founded by, by the Germans. It's founded by some very bad people. So that, that's one place that I, that, that's one organization that I can't believe where I've seen independent people that throw off their balloons and film it, and it's, it never gets round. As high as their balloon gets, it never gets round. So it, it's, mm. I believe those people more than I believe that, that organization. Okay. What about you, Carter? What do you believe? Mm. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I'm like kind of like in the middle. Uh. But, you know, um, I don't know. Like just before I even called you guys, I was called, I was just scrolling through YouTube and stuff and magically this video popped up of, um, Red Bull about this guy that had jumped from oh. uh, space. Yeah. And when he reached up there or, or when he jumped, like you, you see the whole video, it's a Red Bull video, they promoted it or whatever it is. And man, to me, the, the, the earth looks round. Yeah. Like from, Go for it, Alex. from the point from where he jumped. And then there's also. Well, they're um, using the fish sure lens. Steve, right? Oh, you know what? Uh, somebody told huh? me. Somebody told me one day that it's like a pizza. It's round, but it's flat. <laughs> but uh, Alex had a, had a good. Uh, uh, he had a good observation about that. That same. That same footage that you saw. Yeah. Oh, that that uh -huh. footage. They're using a fisheye lens, you, so you, it makes it look. Uh, I don't know any any video I've ever seen on YouTube that has to do with going into space. They're always using a fisheye lens. Okay, what if they want to prove that it's flat? Do they use a flat lens? Well, here's the thing. When you use a fisheye, you know a fisheye lens, right? You know how it works. It oh, makes cheap ass GoPros it makes, have it. It makes all the, the, the edges round. Mm -hmm. it, it just it has distortion. Uh -huh. So every time they, they shoot uh -huh. use videos from up there, they use that lens. Because if you look at the window, even the window is getting round. Look at it again and look at the windows. Mm -hmm. The windows are actually getting uh -huh. round also. But I'm looking at you with no fish eye. You look round. That's what the ladies say. And then, like, the other person that, like, is pretty interesting that said it was round, you guys know Steve from Jackass, right? Oh, I hate that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, well, I, well, I'm, you know who he is, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They, 
he supposedly went all the way up there. He said that he reached the, the curve of the earth or whatever, right? Yeah. And he also said that he's like, yeah, it, it's round up there. Okay. Yeah. But I, honestly, I, I, so, I don't like that. I'm just curious to see what you guys, what you guys thought about them. Like, if you guys haven't seen that Red Bull video, I mean, it's pretty interesting, but if you guys say it's like a fish lens, then mm-hmm. no, I never. Yeah, I never yeah. knew about that, but I guess I'll look at the video differently now. Oh yeah, yeah, that take a second look right. and uh, let let us know, man. Because all good, yeah. caller. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate it, man. All right, but all right, thank you. All right. Yeah, you know, it's funny they call us for the flat earth, but they won't call marvelous when he's here. I know, right? Yeah, I don't know nothing about the flat earth. I mean, you know, and, and I was in all fairness. Norbert, I haven't really studied or looked into it. And to me, probably because I don't care. It's not going to change me as a person. Like, I don't, is it going to make me a better person or a meaner person? Or, well, it, it might change your flight plans. True. Okay. Call your name or where are you calling from? Hey, what's good, Tony? This is Vida Maravilla calling in from El Paso, Texas. Shout uh, out to you and Norby. Vida Maravilla. Ah, shit. Vida you Maravilla. said you were going to call and you did. Prophecy is fulfilled. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> How you doing down there? So I, I'm doing good. Thank you. How you guys doing over there? Good, 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 real good. good. It's starting to get hot over here. Hey. Yeah, it's starting to get hot over here, too. But I have a couple questions for you guys. Go for it. My first question, yeah, my first question is, um, how do you all feel about inmates being in seg for longer than 14 days? Do you think that that, them being in there for, you know, past 14 days, like years, that it's torture, considered torture to human beings? Or do you think it's like a rehabilitation for them? Wait, wait, I, I, I kind of didn't understand the first part of the question. You said uh, inmate being f- in 14 days? No, uh, segregated. In, yeah, no, yeah. Oh. inmate being in segregation for uh, 14 days. Go ahead, Norbert. More uh, than 14 days. Oh, yeah, that, uh, that's uh, definitely punishment. And, um, I mean, that, and that's the other part that's difficult because Let's say they, they, they did something to actually deserve to be, you know, punished, like attacking another inmate or doing such things like that. It's very difficult to figure out, okay, how are you going to get this person from not doing that anymore? And isolation is usually one thing that, you know, people, people really don't, don't like because we're, we need to be connected to people. Alex, you want yeah. to chime in on that one? Yeah, you know what? I think um, I think sometimes people need to uh, be separated from everyone. But as far as like longevity, like how long it will take to break someone, um, I've heard it takes mm-hmm. about a month to break someone like tr- like in, like completely. You know, yeah. there's people that last years, but yeah, like a normal mm-hmm. average person, yeah, it would be considered torture but it also depends what you did mm. you know then there's a good reason they have you in ad seg you know so if you're stabbing up people yeah. and causing problems for them and then they have to spend money to put you away and stuff you know so it's just it's a, it's a, i, I guess it all depends it's, it's yeah, it all t- depends on yeah. the situation who it is and why they went to ad seg yeah, well, see, the reason I ask is because I'm a correctional officer here in Texas, and I've seen a lot of men who have done, you know, 20, 30 years in SEG, and there's some who won't even last, you know, the 14 days. And they're trying to pass a law where, you know, they should not be in there more than 14 days because it's considered torture, no matter what they did. Oh. Damn. Yeah, I... Yeah, that, that's, I, a tough, yeah that's, that's a tough one for me. Well, I just wanted inmates, to know your guys' opinion on that. Inmates seem to have more rights in there than our people have out here, honestly. Mm. How, how so, if you don't <laughs> mind because, me asking? Because if you do anything wrong, like an inmate can like literally write you up. They'll write something called a 602, and they'll like they'll implement all the punishments available to you for doing something wrong. 
you know, and if they approve mm-hmm. that you did something wrong, you know, because some of these inmates are almost lawyers because all they have to do is just sit mm-hmm. there and read that Title 15 mm-hmm. and they know the rules. And if you if the cops break the rules, like literally you can write the cops up. Oh, shit. Wow. wow. And it goes on their record yeah. and shit like that. Wow. Well, good. I hope we can kind of we shed a little bit of light on that because I don't know too much about that, but it does sound torturous. It does sound. But well, Tony, I know one thing's for sure. If I get locked up, it's going to be in Texas. <laughs> Vida, where are you working at, Vida? <laughs> it's okay. He's harmless, Vida. <laughs> They can't say I'm in trouble. I know, I know. <laughs> Send me in the DMs. <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah. Oh, do you so have a second, my second question? question was, yeah. Um, do you think that the kids nowadays would benefit more from the discipline that we used to get back then? You know, like getting whipped with alambres, chanclas. Life waters versus them getting their phones taken away, you know, being punished, being kept in the room. Because I feel like also if you isolate your kids and tell them to stay in the room, they also get these, you know, the same thing that happens with the inmates. They start getting these thoughts. They start, you know, it's negative. Yeah. Do you think that they would benefit more from the regañadas back then, or I do what believe they do nowadays? I do believe good discipline, especially. I just want to, I'm going to say back then, because that's the way I was raised, Norbert. Yeah. And I do want to say something, Vida, is this. Every ass beaten that I got from my mother or, or my father, I had coming. I knew I deserved it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because I knew I messed up, okay? Yeah. It wasn't, well, I'm going to call the cops and they're going to take you to jail. No, because I knew they'll take me away from my parents, mm. okay? And I know my parents are disciplining me. Yeah. My parents meant right uh, on how to uh, on how they disciplined me. Yeah. They knew what they were doing, and I knew my mother loved me. I knew my mother and my father would have gave their life for me. Yeah. But so I accepted that, that discipline. Did I like it? No. no. But today's totally different. You know, when I would come home and I had a letter from the teacher and I gave it to my mother, my mother would grab it, crumble it, and she'll say, ¿Qué hiciste, cabrón? Mm. Because she knew what kind of son she had. Yeah. Okay, you know what I would say? Mm-hmm. Le dije a la profesora que vaya a chingar su madre. O yo te voy a chingar la tuya, cabrón. Yeah. I told her the truth because I feared. Not feared my parents in a sense where I was scared. Yeah. But there was certain boundaries that I knew I couldn't cross. Yeah. And I think today, kids have no boundaries with parents, bro. No, they don't. A lot of them don't. You know, I've known parents that have told me, uh, I don't want to be their, their father. I don't want to be their mother. I just want to be their friend. And there's a trip because some of these parents let the grandparents raise their, their kids and the, the grandparents only spoil the kids even more. There's, or even more. It's true. It's true. And it's true. But with me being able to raise my grandkids yeah. that live with me, me personally, like I take them to the park. Yeah. You're not going to do that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you do that, you're going back home. Do you understand? Yeah. Yes, grandpa. Okay, you know what? Today you're not going to watch TV. We're going to do homework. Yes, Grampy. You're not going to eat until you finish your homework. Yes, Grampy. After that, tubby time. Okay, there's got to be some type of discipline. Yeah. So, somebody may say, well, you know, you're no different from a jail. Let, let me raise my kids. You okay, know? so that's, this, that's good discipline, Tony. But, but, but what about, uh, you know, physical discipline? Like? There's, there's not a guy that's... Okay, that that was that was that, that's the the legal way. But back in the day, they weren't doing that. Guy, that's what they were whipping you. Well, of course, bro. In the Look, arm, I had the show, the back, the legs. Bro, I had my mom throw manteca at me, hot, hot lard, <laughs> because I was a damn diablo. You know, <laughs> you know a cord, a, a damn. From, from but what about that though? What about that? Is that like okay? Now? Okay, well, is okay. that not okay? Okay, what do you mean? It was okay for me back then. That was in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. yeah. Okay, today, people will consider that child abuse. You'll get the cops called on you. They'll record it. They'll put it all over social media. You'll be considered the fucking bad parent. That's the problem today with this generation. I, I disagree, Tony. I, I don't think of that... Of course ha- you I don't, I don't think that happens, and I think we, we've seen enough cases of uh, children that have died from child abuse when, when they had cases, and these social workers didn't fucking do their job. Norbert, but... Yeah. When... I understand your point. My mom had 10 kids and she fucked us all up. 
But we all got what we had coming. Mm. Okay. She didn't pull a knife on me. Hey. She, she never fucking burned me with the iron. You know what I'm saying? Like, or she never had an ex boyfriend or a boyfriend that would beat the shit out of nothing like that. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you one that I think is child abuse, and this guy was my age. Yeah. And I went to his house, and you know what I saw his ass do? Yeah. His dad punished him. Remember those heaters that would go up against the wall? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. He turned it on. Okay. Full blast. You're going to kneel in front of that heater, okay? And I'm going to put a plate of corn on the floor, and your knees are going to be kneeling on that corn, and you're going to hold your, your arms up, and you're going to sit there while the fucking heat is heating you, and then the fucking corn is burning your fucking knees. I walked in. I said, what the fuck is that? That's abuse. That's, that's torture. That's pretty thoughtful. Pretty, uh, there, there was some thought behind that. Yes. His, his dad was a military man from another country. He knew how to torture oh. people. And he was doing it to his own fucking kids. Now, that is torture. That's child abuse. Yeah, okay. Pero si, si lo agarras del pinche pelo y no pinche nalgadas, yeah. that's fine for me. You know what, Tony? It's crazy because for me, the physical abuse never really bothered me so much. I think the one thing that did bother me the, the most was actually disappointing my mom. Actually, of course. actually making her cry. Of course. I think that one actually hurted me more than actually the, the, the beatings. The beatings didn't actually hurt me too much. Right. I mean, I could take it. I could pretend I'm crying so she could stop. But right. at the end of the day, the ones that did hurt me the most is when, when, it, I, when I just actually just disappointed her. And she couldn't even beat me. And you know what? And I, and I live with that because right. I, I think pre- we all do. But when my mom would hit me, many times I would just laugh. Yeah. It hurt it, but I just laughed. Yeah, because it know? Didn't, didn't really hurt. Porque era un pinche diablo. But the moment so. when she just sits down there and just cries and just feels yeah. heartbroken because she's not even beating helps. Anyways, Vida, what made you ask that? Um, I just wanted to know because I there was a parent who got incarcerated recently at the unit where I'm at, and it was for child abuse. But, you know, he kind of said his story the way he dealt with his kid, I guess you could say. Yeah. And it, I, to me, it wasn't really child abuse, but, I mean, other people view it differently. And I can't really say what he did, but I wouldn't, I don't see it as child abuse. Hmm. You know, I had a family member who actually was abused. And, you know, the mom would, she would get all loped out and she would put them in the corner of the wall. And the little girl got so bored that she started picking up the wall and, there was a hole eventually after three hours. So the mom went and she took the sheetrock and started shoving it in the little girl's mouth. Like oh. she was like, you're so entertained by this. Yeah. So it was like, that to yeah. me is child abuse. You yeah, know? definitely. Uh, another form of child so abuse. I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, uh, mm-hmm. I want to say Gabriel Hernandez, the kid that they made the Netflix oh, about. Yeah. The mom's boyfriend, yeah. what he did, that is like the epitome, bro, of child abuse right and, there, bro. And he had a social worker. Yeah, and they never fucking checked up. The even though the grandma yeah. was telling the social worker, take the kid away. See, see, but those weren't even whippings. They were, they, they were putting out cigarettes in the back of his head, bro. The grandma, the grandma was reporting this. Social yeah. workers did nothing for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Vida, I'm glad you got through it. Anything else? Um, no, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to know your guys' opinion on those things. Cool. Oh, all right. Thank you. Cool, cool, I greatly cool. appreciate you taking the time all the way from El Paso, Paso Texas. Yes. Hit me in the DM for that, the, for right. the location. Thank you. All right, <laughs> all right Vida. Okay, thank you. calmate, <laughs> pinche forneado. Okay. Hey, but you know what I did to not disappoint my mom? What? Got better at doing bad things. You got better at doing, damn. <laughs> my mom. If she, if she doesn't know, then Does she your can't mom get watch your opponent. podcast? <laughs> Anyways, here we go. Call her your name, but where are you calling from? What's up, man? My name's Fernando. Call her San Bernardino. For, What's up, my brother? What's San up, Bernardino? Fernando? What's up, man? I just wanted to comment on the last caller. On, what's her name? Rita, Vida, or something? Vida Maravilla. Yeah, you know about um, long term incarceration being in segregation. Mm. Um. You know, I was I was listening to what she was saying. You know, me personally, and I did like 15 straight years in the um, the shoe in the California CDCR. Wow. And um, you know, after a, you know, me at first it was you know having fun and everything, but after a while, like I got out the shoe, went back. And then when I went back to Adsig, I kind of kind of got kind of like um, 
like PTSD and it started like affecting me a little bit. Mm. But at the same time, I was like, 14 days, I mean, yeah, that ain't, that ain't really nothing. And like you people were saying, no, oh, you got this other person right there, like people do things and they do get segregated. We still got sound mates, we're still around people. And then um, back then when I got in the car center, we have group yards, so we always around people. Mm. But in the long run, being single style, like over 15 years, going back out, coming back in, it did kind of get to you. But you know, that's why like California, a lot of that stuff changed. They don't have long-term segregation anymore. So, um, you know, I was just, I was just listening to what she was saying about all that. So, you know, she made some good points. So California is kind of different now, but, um, as far as being torturous, you know, I mean, inmates, convicts, they're going to have their point of view. And of course they're going to, you know, um, want, you know, want, want to be looking at it. Like we're always right. You know, we're going against the CDCR, you know, the CEOs and all that. So we're right. Yeah. But I do believe in the long run, it does affect people. Cause I've seen a lot of people years later. Like, I don't know, sometimes you're in your own little world. You don't have your little, your little, your little outburst. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to touch upon that, man. But as far as being torturous, I don't see it as being torturous. You, you know what? Depends, hang on. Um, huh? You, you know what, caller? I had a, a, a two part question since you've been incarcerated. Maybe you can help us. I've never been incarcerated. The, the, the most I've ever been in was LP and county jail once. Okay. So I have no experience on that. So all I can do is ask um, what do you. What do you do to pass time while you're in a cell by yourself? That's my first one. And my second one is, what do you think it is about being by yourself that breaks someone? Okay, well, the first question, I mean, people do different things. Some people draw, some people do this. Me, I study, I study, you know, um, play chess, study, study, study. That's it. Um, what breaks people, it depends if you're, if you're by yourself. I think it break people because they just stare at the walls. I mean, they got TV, so they blank out on TV. Sometimes people could be in certain assets you ain't got TV for years. I mean, I didn't watch TV. I didn't really mess with that. But I see a lot of people, I, I believe it's all mental. It depends how the individual, you know, how they grew up. Yeah. I mean, for, mm. for me, I mean, I did it. I had fun the whole time. I was there being segregated. I had fun. I studied and studied. But it's kind of like you threw me back out. I went back out to the population. And then I went back to Adsig like about two years later, and I kind of started feeling like the walls. I don't know. It was just different. It was a different situation. Oh. Well, I don't know if that happens with individuals. I just I had having like like panic attack, anxiety. Mm -hmm. I just saying that I just kept it to myself. But it, it, I don't know. It's like it came back. It's like everything came closing back in on me. Even when I did try to study and read, it kind of affected me a little bit. Damn. So yeah, it just kind of affected me a little bit. But at the same time, you know, I, um, I ended up, I ended up getting out. And sometimes I, I'm like, you know, man, I never went back to prison. I never went back. Never did start to roll. Never went back. But sometimes I'll be here and I'll be like, man, I couldn't do that shit again. I don't think I could be able to do that shit again. Yeah, yeah. Like, man, I'll just be like, I don't know. I mean, I think about it like, damn, yeah. probably get anxiety and it's like, nah, hell nah. Fuck so I that, think in the long man. run, it does affect everybody. You can be strong. You can be mentally strong. All that, you know, I man. That's all good. Everyone, a lot of people are mentally strong. People do thirty years. People were doing thirty years until they all, everyone got kicked out of the shoes again. They set the, the security housing units down. From Pelican Bay, Cork, and she they go got them, but they, they shut them all down. For well, a lot of people, I believe it did affect them. It did affect people because some people act different. Their little attitudes, everything just changed. But individuals who you knew before, you can see it. You can see a difference in a lot of individuals. But a lot of people keep all that mental health to themselves. You know, they just deal with it with however way they deal with it, man. Yeah. So you know, you know, what I mean, I liked it what she was talking about for 14 days. I mean, I don't see that torture. Like, like, like the other man was saying right there. Sometimes you know, inmates do you know you assault an inmate. It's not really going to change nothing, being segregated or not. Right, right. Mm. Well, yeah, man. Um, oh, good, man. Yeah, yeah, I like what she said, man. Um, hey, man, I like your guys' the show. I watch, the, I, watch you, I watch you guys all the time. I've been watching uh, Morby run the face. Thank I've you, I've been sir. watching Marvelous. You guys, you, you guys keep it up, man. All the mother podcasts, man. It's all, it's all, it's all a suit, man. You, hey. guys, you, guys, you guys have some uh, You guys have some solid topics, man. I like it, man. You guys take care. Have a good night, man. Thank you, my Thank brother. You, man. I appreciate Stay you, blessed. man. Hells yeah. Yeah, appreciate those calls, man. You yeah, know, man, that was dope. We have a bunch of great calls, you know what? And that's a good. I, I like uh, Vita Maribia's questions, bro, because. But now today, you no, know, bro, what she was saying, you know. Possibly, if somebody ever saw my mother beat me up the way she did, people would have probably thought it was child abuse. Yeah, right? and I get it. Yeah, you know, Baby Bash. You know, we follow each other on Instagram. Yeah, he posted up how there was a woman, uh, elbowing a little boy's face and mm -hmm. hating him, bro. Like. But. You're never supposed to hit him in the face, bro. Yeah. 
So let's get this call right Not here. Not the face. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? Spencer Baca from Sac Town. Spencer Baca. It is Spencer. Yeah. What's good, Spencer? What's How up, you doing? Spencer? It's going good, man. It's been about a month probably since I called in. But, Tony, I saw your interview on Gangster Chronicles podcast. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you, I never knew this. You mentioned you and High C had a falling out in the 90s. How long did that last? Fuck. I think the rest of the 90s. <laughs> so when did you, wait, I know you have the Scandalous album from 1991, and then you produced another album, I believe, for Crawford as well. But so yeah. when did you guys get back in contact? When did you guys squash the beast? Well, you know, the, the thing was this, that throughout the 90s, we didn't really talk as much. Okay, so when the second album came around and I ended up doing those six songs, uh, I did them and then I was pretty much out. I did no shows with them. I showed up to like one video shoot and uh, that was pretty much it. I did my own independent thing and he did his own independent thing. I was still on the label doing remixes and stuff like that, but nothing like where I came out with, you know, with uh, um, with another high C record. It was just that was the second one. Now, I was about to get a group no signed. Hold on, but I have to share this story for the homies out here in the Harbor area because this is important. I never mentioned this. There was a Filipino group that I was working with. They were from Carson. They were from a, a blood neighborhood called the Patch. And uh, the one guy was named Augie and another guy named, named Brian. Those guys, I believe, were about to get signed to Disney because I, I was still there and I had the, the hookup. I was pr- working on their demos and everything was going good. Somebody ended up going to their house because they lived together and ended up killing Brian. Deleting them. Yeah. Damn. Well, one of the guys. Oh, that's, that's awful. Rest in peace. Yes, bro. So that never happened. That, and we were very, very close to getting signed, bro. And then after that, I uh, started working with Brown Town. Uh, I, I just started working with a lot of other people during the 90s. But it wasn't until the 2006 that me and uh, High C Crawford started talking again. And then from there, we just, uh, um, we started like, I started coaching my son football, yeah. and he was coaching his son football, so yeah. we played each other. He coached his son Hawthorne, yeah. and I was Wilmington. So we would see each other every year, bro. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that's how, that, that's so how we got reacquainted. You guys, stopped talking, you guys stopped talking for like 13 years, and then around 2006, you got back in touch with him, and ever since then, you guys have been friends again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. exactly. That's cool, man. The other... The, la- the other thing I wanted to ask, uh, I was watching that night Frost called in and chewed you out. Did you guys make up or no? Can no. you can you re-ask that question? Because I know you said you were going to screenshot Frost's number and call him. Did you ever do that? No, I have no business calling him. If I see him, I'll see him. I'm going to start doing shows again. So um, if I see him, I see him. I don't have nothing against, uh, and I'm going to say that publicly, bro. I don't have nothing against Frost. I just don't like another man talking to me that way, whether it was Frost or not. I just don't allow any man to speak to me that way. Mm. That's it. And- well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't let people disrespect you, but I have... Frost claimed you were being dishonest, but I don't think that's true. And when you interviewed Frost on the documentary, he showed you nothing but love. You showed him nothing but love. So I don't feel like Frost had any reason to be mad. Yeah, I do. Before before we hang up this call, (laughs) I got a statement and then I'm out. Hey. Um. So anyway, um, I know you're gonna. You mentioned that you were gonna bring a uh, MCA and Warren G on Rhodium Radio soon, but bring all those other legends on Rhodium Radio that were booked before COVID. I'm trying, my bro. I'm trying, but when these like, guys, you know, you had Dub C and Mac Ten book. Mm. You know, the list goes on. Hey. Right. Who knows? Probably a bunch of other people too. I've commented on your Instagram about it before. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you tag those people. Yeah, exactly. 
All right, Spencer. Appreciate I you, will, man. Spencer? All right. Yeah, I'll tag him because this is what the last thing I have to say. You had Dub C, MCA, Mac Ken, uh, Warren G, and I believe J.O. Felony books, but I don't know if for sure. Yes. Yes, but that was around, but right? Any, that was before COVID hit, bro, and everything changed after that. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot. Um, to mention BG Knockout, too. He was booked, too. But anyway, have a good night, Tony. All right, bro. All right, Spencer. Good to hear you, man. Absolutely. T- don't go, no. <laughs> hey, you know what? I don't I don't know if anybody has asked you this question, Tony. What's is, is there a possibility for a third album? Yeah, if the business is right. I mean, the, the music is there, it, the, it's, and I know Heisey can write to the, it. The game is independent now, the it's, independent artists. Yes, I know, but we got to find out how to make money independently. Yeah. You know, Spotify ain't going to give you shit. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't mind an updated version of a... Uh, Here we go. Call her your name, and where are you calling from? Hello? Hello? Yo. Hey. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. So, yeah, I'm trying to see if I can uh, bring up a topic right quick with Tony A. Candle. Who's this? Snorbies. Oh, what's cracking? Am I live right now? Yes, sir. So Tony's on the line, too. Um, Tony's Tony on the line, also. What's going on, Tony? Hey, how you doing tonight, man? What's up, my brother? How you doing tonight? I'm enjoying the show tonight. We got about 30 more minutes, so we got to get some good, more phone calls good. on, my brother. What's good? Yeah, so real quick, man, you know about, about the sun, I mean, about the earth being flat. So if the earth was flat, homie, where would the sun and the moon, the sun and the moon would have nowhere to go? That, that would be impossible if you really think about it. You know what? And those are all the things that I take into perspective, and I have to agree with you. Somebody showed me a map of the sky and showed me all these round, uh, you know, solar systems like the sun. They showed me Pluto. They showed me Venus. They're all round, but then when they show Earth, it's all flat like a pizza. So I'm thinking, okay, that doesn't look right. And then somebody said that's not an accurate picture. Right. To me, it, the flat Earth is new to me. I'll be honest with you. I only heard of the flat Earth maybe four years ago. Really? Yeah, but not not to, cut, not to cut you books. off, homie. But but where would the sun? Where would the sun and the moon like? Okay, so right now it's dark in the, on the on the Western Hemisphere. Mm. So it's sunny on the other side of the world, homie. Mm. If it was flat, the sun and the moon would appear at the same time. That 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 wouldn't. We would be dead. We we can't even. We, we couldn't even live on like that. It, it, it would be impossible. Well, wait. Uh, let me call her. Where 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 are, you, where are you calling from? What state? Here. I'm from LA, brother. Okay, so so I'm pretty sure you've yeah, seen the you seen LA, you you seen when the sun is out, you see that the moon is out also, right? The sun is out. The sun is out in um, and the um, moon. like over there in like in the east. Right yeah, now. And, and the moon is like uh, I'm literally like across from it. Like what ne- do you mean? It, it's dark like, in California right now, bro. So that means like it's somewhere in China or Africa or whatever. The sun, right? It's but sunny the, over there because the world is moving around. So if the world is flat, how is it moving around? How but, is it, you know what I mean, circulating around? Like how, you, how you, No, you got it. You, that? It's circulating around like this. I don't know if you can see my hand on the screen, but it's going around the flat no, I'm surface. Not, I'm not really looking on the screen right now. My bad. You, 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 you got to imagine the, that these two things are, are floating up there and going around. And it's it's because okay. it's not a coincidence that we have eclipses. There's no other planet in our solar system that has eclipse. Just us. Now that cannot be a coincidence that we're the only ones that have a perfectly no, shaped absolutely, moon absolutely to not, cover. This. I don't believe in coincidences, man. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I believe in the one true God. I'm not going to get into religion right now. I believe in God. I don't mm-hmm. believe in coincidence. I believe everything was written. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But yeah. let me bring up another. Um, Interesting topic. Go so why it. would it be cold in the North Pole if the Earth if the Earth was flat? Why would it be cold as cold as heck out there, but then like hot and you know what I mean, like in the Mojave Desert somewhere? What that doesn't? I mean, that 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 proves that the world is is round, bro. Well, I'll tell you one thing right now. As far as I know, none of us are allowed to go to the North Pole or the South Pole. 
That only government people are, are that's allowed. A is that a, no, no, that's not a conspiracy. That's a fact. You are not allowed to go, enter into the Antarctica without permission. You could go to Alaska, though. But, but yeah, cats, but that's Alaska. Cats can, go, cats can go. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the word. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not going street talk on, on Tony's show, but people can go to Alaska, my brother. You feel me? They, we can go to Alaska. We can go to we can go to South Mexico mm-hmm. where it's hot as fuck, like in Guerrero and yeah. all that. You know those parts of Mexico, Acapulco and all that. Yeah, it's hot as shit over there. Yeah, it's hot as shit over here in uh over in Arizona. Yeah, you, excuse my language. And then you go to like Alaska, it's cold as heck. You go to Greenland, it's cold as heck. So that that I mean, how is that gonna happen if the world is flat? Now, I wanted to talk to Marvelous about that, but you know he's not yeah. here tonight. <laughs> you know what's interesting though uh, that you mentioned uh, Greenland, right? Greenland is ice, right? Yeah, yeah. They, and they then the name and Iceland is all Iceland, green. Yeah, Iceland is green, and they're next to each other. <laughs> make that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> okay, caller. Just for the record, well, yeah, that's a trip, right? <laughs> just just yeah. for the record, I don't believe in a flat Earth. So Norbert has right. just recently became a born again flat earth <laughs> so <laughs> not re- no uh, not recently no, not recently not recently but don't lie I, I definitely had not believed that it's round for a long but time but i've only heard of the flat earth maybe hey, four Tony, when is uh marvelous coming back on man so i can talk to the brother you know what oh shit I'll, the only thing i could do is just ask you to follow me on instagram bro and then or on youtube and i posted on my community on youtube or I post it on my Instagram. I usually post it two to three days beforehand, bro. So or or call okay, him, so call like him on his personal. Let him finish, bro. Something like that. I'm sorry. What was that? <laughs> no, I'm saying you do like a live. Like you don't do lives too often. You, like you do a live like maybe once a week or once a month or something like that. No, when I bring him on, sometimes it's once a month or twice a month. All, all depends with his schedule as well because he goes live on his podcast. Marvelous Minds as well. Yes, yes. So he may be going does live. Does he have a number that I can call where he goes, oh, he does go live. You said, okay, my bad, my bad. He, yes, he does. And on his Instagram, if you follow him, you could DM him and he'll give you his number or on his bio, his his number's there. Yep. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, he's a righteous brother, man. He's a righteous dude. I, I, you know what I mean? I respect Marv to the fullest, man. Yeah. Hey man, you too, Tony. Like, you know what I mean? Like, thank you. you guys ain't with that drama and all that bullshit that's going on on YouTube. But I, I appreciate the call, man. Thank you for having me, brother. Thank you, my brother. You brother. guys have a blessed night, man. You Peace. too, man. Thank you. Peace. Also, uh, shout out to Marvelous. He is in the live chat. Maybe he'll answer some of your questions on there. Marvel, I mean Norbert, let them finish. <laughs> let let them finish. <laughs> I know you're antsy. <laughs> I am always wanna, antsy. It's all good. It's but, all good. Uh, Okay, here we go, right here. Caller, your name, and where are you calling from? Hey, what up, Tony? This uh, this is Brian from Santa Ana, brother. What's up, Brian? Uh, how's it going, brother? How, how's everything on your side? Everything is good, man. You know what? Uh, it's a blessed night. I'm glad we're taking these calls. Yep. We haven't taken this many calls in a minute. Yep. We usually try to take calls the last 30 minutes of the show, but when we do calls with the Wizard, we just try to take calls all night. Yep. Yeah, brother. So, hey, what's up with you, Norby? How are you doing, brother? I'm good, man. Even though I'm wearing a jacket, it is starting to get warmer in L.A. Yes. Hey, hey brother. So, Norby, how, how you feel about this guy? How about this uh, Chicano rap shit, dog? You started all this shit. How does it feel? <laughs> what, what do you mean I started now? What do you mean I started it? <laughs> Elaborate on that, please. <laughs> you said it last time. What, what you said without this kid, kid Fox drama shit, you know? But I'm, I'm not getting too detailed with that one. You said that's how you started all this Chicano shit? You, you, How does that feel now, brother? You know, you know what? I'm gonna have to advise you to check out Run the Fade because I do a lot of explaining of on those things over there. It'll be a lot to go over. It's a lot. It's a lot. So, <laughs> all right, bro. All right, brother. Well, hey, just want to give a quick shout out to you guys. Hey, all the, uh, nothing but love from Santa, brother. Stay, thank, stay you. Thank, you, there, love, Santa. thank you, man. Much love, Santa. I appreciate you, man. Peace. Orange County, nothing but love. Santa Ana, nothing but love. Marvelous. Say you tried calling. Uh, well, I mean. Call right now, Marvelous, please. <laughs> you know, I mean, y- anybody can call. <laughs> Look, right now we have no calls, so you can call right now. There you go. <laughs> if you're listening, please call, Marvelous. Okay. So, um, but see, no calls. Aside from that, uh, fuck, what were we talking about before the, the call? About you getting waxed? I don't know. No, 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 no. I was trying to get to a point. Okay, here we go right here. So we got another call. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Uh, this is Joe. I'm from Idaho. 
Joe from Idaho. How you doing? How's it going, guys? Joe, good. what's up? Pretty hey, good. Joe, do you guys what make up? your own vodka what up, over there? Nord. What up, man? What was that? Do you guys make your own vodka up there? Because you guys have a lot of potatoes up there. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of breweries in in Idaho. I'm from uh, East Idaho, which is like uh, they they make more like um, like IPAs. Makes mm. sense. Um, Northern nice. Idaho is more like wine, and then like Boise areas where they do like the the vodka. So Rasa's on the east side, white people on the north. So yeah. hey, yeah, go ahead, call yes. it. <laughs> so um, I, uh, I I'm calling because I wanted to give a shout out to you, Tony, and your team. Because you guys have, um, you guys have helped me through college with uh, with your show, and I appreciate it. Oh, Thank shit. you, man. You know what? If, <laughs> if you don't mind me yeah, asking you, I've, you I've a, how how so? Uh, if, if you don't mind me, I mean, if you don't mind elaborating. Uh, well, when I um, when I found out about you, Tony, the the way I found out about you was um, I, I um, through through High C. So I, I bought you know the Scandalous album. Um, I'm, I, I guess you, you can tell from my voice, I'm not, you know, an old guy. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty young. I'm, I'm 24. Uh, and, uh, you know, high school years, I was all into old school rap. And um, I uh, I bought the Scandalous album. I bought the um, the Swingin' album. Yeah. Immediate fan of your production. Immediate fan of your production. Thank you. So I was, when I found out that you were you were making, uh, or you were making a documentary and that you were doing a podcast along with it, I was like, hell yeah, this is dope. Thank you. And then once I graduated high school, um, that's when you started your um, the the podcast. Um, uh, your first your your first uh, episode with with Mello. Um, yes. That's ever since then I've been I've been hooked. <laughs> Thank you, man. You know what? That truly so, tru- I, I, truly means a lot, bro. Uh huh. So you know you know you got love out here in Idaho. Uh, it, it may it may seem small out here, but you got love out here. Thank you. I, I put hell of people onto onto you onto the show. Thank you. It's greatly, greatly appreciated, man, to know that we could be, I could be sitting here in my home, in my neighborhood, you know, we turn on, you know, the internet, YouTube, and we go live and we touch so many people. To me, I don't take that for granted, bro. That's a blessing. And to be able to talk to you and never, ever met you and you're telling me this, bro, it's a blessing. So I almost see it as this podcast is mission accomplished, bro. So thank you for that. It is, it is. Definitely it is. Um, I, I do have one question though, Tony. Yes. Um, since I'm, I'm a big fan of your production, uh, I love the beats that you did on on uh, JV's first album. Uh-huh. How was it working with JV? Uh-huh. JV. How was it working with their like? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Let me say this about JV. Um, and I think this is what led me to stop working with JV. Oh. That- uh oh. JV Uh-oh. had a hard time believing in herself as, as much as talent has she had. You know what she reminded me of? Number one, a hurt woman that was pro- possibly, and I say possibly because I don't know because she never opened up about it. A woman that was probably hurt by a man, maybe in her past life, oh. maybe not past life, her past relationship. Yeah. And she mm-hmm. didn't believe in herself. Like she could write a song mm-hmm. and the, I could say, oh, this year's going to fucking take off. And she'll say, yeah, we're in the, you know, mm-hmm. we're in the studio. It's dope. She goes home. She calls me. She's like, I don't think it's going to do anything. I, I just, I don't see it going anywhere. What if nobody likes it? What if people tell me I'm whack? Very, very low self-esteem. So many times I would, if it wasn't music, I would spend time talking to her and asking her, who put this in your head? Who put this in your head? Like, Damn. and she just didn't believe in herself. At least that's the way she was with mm-hmm. me, you know? And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I tried to lead her and guide her in the right direction, bro. I still got songs with her that I've never released. As a matter of fact, her last glossy, every artist back then had a black and white picture that uh-huh. you, that the label would have made up yep. that you would autograph and give to people. So one day I'm going through her stuff and she had one of her first ones. And I said, wow, I've never seen this. And she said, you could have it. Damn. And I said, why? She goes, I don't want it. It was even to the That's point. That's how much she didn't believe in herself. Yes. Now, no, but look back there. See it up there. That's it. Yeah. yeah I've seen that one. Yeah. So I have it hanged up here in, in my studio, bro. She, she, and so, mm. it, you know, go ahead, bro. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, I, I, I truly love JV. I love for that second album, I guess, No Rila, with, with, with all Jay Swift's production, you know, Farside, he did the first Farside album. Yeah. 
super underrated album. Super underrated. Yeah. I love his beats that he made for that album. I, I'm just a little sad that you didn't produce anything on that, but I'm assuming it's because it was a Jay Swift project. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, oh my God, bro, she was flowing on that on that second album, bro. I, I got don't know how she didn't believe in herself. I got stuff after that. That's when I f- finished working with her after that second album. That if people mm-hmm. heard, they they would say this, and I I don't say this disrespectfully. I do not that there would be no female Chicana mm-hmm. right now that could ever top JV. Damn. Uh, I don't no. care what they yeah, say no, about no one can fade her. No one can fade her about any other Chicana out here, bro. You know, she didn't have social media pop- popularity because there was no social media back then. She just had the skills, bro. I, I would want to. I would want to see, uh, if possible, a challenge between her and uh, and uh, no, the product. Okay. Her her old stuff though, not 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 like nah, her new I, stuff. I think JV would fade her, bro. I, like, I think I think she would just sweep the floor with her. Like the older she, stuff, she though, not, not 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 her current stuff. Like more of her older stuff when she was more like. Yeah. Uh, about but, lyrics yeah so that was that nah, was my even, story even then, Norbs, even then really yeah no jv was was dope yeah jv was dope man the the it gets no real album I, I i it's hard to get a copy of it but i bought a copy off of discog holy yeah. shit it turned yeah. me on into onto like it made me uh, uh it made me appreciate her a lot more and it made me appreciate jay swift uh from far side a lot more too because mm. he had some dope beats as well on that album absolutely Anyways, caller man, I appreciate you asking me oh, that question. Man. I haven't talked about her in a minute. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. No, I, I, that's why I wanted to call in. I was like, damn, I gotta ask him about JV because I know he worked with her. Yes. <laughs> All good, my brother. Maybe one day I may release those songs. That'd be dope. Perfect. Yeah. Once you do, shout or um, put it on on Insta because I follow you on Insta too. When, once, if you do that, put it on Insta and I'll, I'll definitely match it up. Let, let me know on Insta who who, who you are, bro. Okay. D- d- DM me. Okay. Perfect. All right, my bro. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Did he ever explain how we helped him out through college? Yes. You weren't listening because you were too busy trolling. <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? I, if if this is him, shout out to Tony G for being in the live chat. Okay. If that's him. I, I, I'm not looking on the live chat. Anyways, thank you. Thank you guys for, for everything, bro. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. All, thank you too, man. Thank you. Peace. Appreciate you. Norbert, if you're going to say, don't be on there and then <laughs> ignore our callers. <laughs> But yeah, you want to ask him a thousand questions. Okay, here we go. Bye, bye. Call her your name and where are you calling from? Uh, Chris, man, from Delano, bro. Chris from Delano. How you doing? What's up, man? I'm pretty good, bro. Um, I had a question, bro, just because he was talking about the the flat earth theory. Uh, oh. So you guys believe in God also, right? Yes, I, I do. Well, why do you say it okay, like that? So. Because you told me you no, believe I, in... Hold on, hold on, hold on, caller. Because you told me you believe yeah, in some God from your tribe. Well, God is God. So well, that's you, him? You, yeah, yeah. There, there's a different uh, okay. gods. Well, what was his name? Yeah. Huh? Well, in, in, in my tribe, is Cosillo. Cosillo? Yes. Okay, see, that's not the God that I believe in. So you believe in your God and I believe in my God. At the end of the day, they're, they're both about life, right? Jesus. I believe in that God. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> I thought you said it was a history book. Oh, okay. oh, I guess. Yeah, right. Okay, well, my question is, all right. So in the Bible, when the devil tempted Jesus, yes. it yeah. says that it took him to the highest point of the earth, right? Yes. Like on the highest peak or something. Yeah. So how would it be that he would show him the whole earth if it's, if it's round? If it makes any sense, my question. Oh, wow. That's a good one. You know what? I would have to pull out that scripture in order for me to tell you. That's a good one. Okay. You just fucked them up. Yeah, there's a, there's <laughs> We're talking about the Bible. You're you cussing. Know, You're talking about the God. <laughs> See, th- 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 <laughs> let me tell you something about this guy. He's a one upper. He's one of those guys that licks his lips and plays with his hands like a, like a fly, hoping to get me on something. But okay. Now, do you know, other than Matthew, which one you're reading? Uh, you know what? I just know it because I, I'm. I also don't. They say that's like a hard question because there is some scriptures. I even seen another one that says that the earth is held up by pillars. By a cousin who said four pillars or three pillars or something, but it said it's held up by pillars in the Bible. Okay. So I don't know exactly where exactly, but if you Google it, like if you put it on there, I'll show you the scripture and everything because that's one of the things I argue too. Even that uh that that NASA guy, the black guy, he also said on there. His words that he said that the earth is not round. 
he says himself that it's at an oval kind of way, but it's not rounded himself, he said it. So I'm like, well, that kind of dangles on both sides, if I make any sense. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read to you the scripture, okay? Hmm. This is Matthew 4. Yes, Which version, though? Okay, it doesn't matter. You can look up any translation. It says the same thing. <laughs> you can read the King James Version, the New King James Version, the Blue Letter King James. You can read it in Old Spanish. Testament. La Reina Valera. You can read it. It says the same thing, bro. They're just different translations. Don't believe this guy. <laughs> okay? So, but re read it for yourself. This is, um, I want to say... Uh, four chapter nine. I mean, I'm sorry. Chapter four, verse nine. Mm. And again, the devil took him upon a, an a exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, yeah. all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. So he's pretty much saying, yeah. I will give you these kingdoms and their glory. Okay, so now to me, you know what's more yeah. of an interesting question from that than the whole flat earth thing? Yeah. Where did yeah, Satan Mr. get that authority to give it to Jesus? No, uh, of course, I'm 100%. I'm with you with that, of course. Okay. But I'm just saying the, the point that you said he took him on there. A high mountain. Said, okay, well, of course, he has, he, has, he has no power against our Lord. He's man. What, you do, know, you, what do you nothing. mean, though? What? But yeah, how you say that he took him up there. It means that he's on a high place where he's showing them the whole, all the kingdoms. That's the point, I'm, you know, right. I'm trying to kind of get to is where he's showing them everything. If it would, how would we be able to see it if the world is round? Mm. I have a lot of, I have so many good. Yeah. things that me, myself, I, I went through it. Like how this, how they try to explain gravity. Right. Gravity does not make sense, but it's hard because they're like, well, this is what they teach us. They right. tell us this, so they kind of make the, the mm. flat earth person to believe it. Right. Kind of sound crazy, but when all these things come in place, you know, like when they tell you everything, this and there's so much out there, you're like, damn, yeah. you yeah. know, right? Yeah. You, you know what color? Here's one thing. Here's one thing that I want you to look at. Okay, I never had to look at yes, this sir. in the Greek because I've never had a problem with the scripture, but the New Testament was written in the Greek. So what I usually do, I do word studies. So in this verse, verse chapter nine, I would look up the word when it says. Again, the devil took, took him upon an exceedingly high mountain, number one, high mountain, because it says mountain, okay? And it showed him all the kingdoms. I would look up kingdoms, what he, uh, it specifically means in the Greek. And then it says, uh, the kingdoms of the world and their glory. That's what I would look up, okay? Because it could have well, just what, been what showing him. More, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Wouldn't it make more sense? That they, wait, I'm sorry. Wouldn't it make more sense than, than to go look into Hebrew? Wouldn't that be more of a thing to go look into? Well, the that's he where we translated from, huh? no, no, the Hebrew was the Old Testament, and only certain parts of the Old Testament were Aramaic. Right, the, yeah. the New Testament oh, okay. was written in the Greek, and then eventually, during Jesus' time, there was something called the Septuagint, where the Hebrew was actually even translated into the Greek, and then from there came the Latin okay, Vulgate. So the whole yeah. New Testament is not you're saying it's not with it, um, like I don't, I don't explain on it tampoco. Yeah. Well, it the New Testament was written in Greek, so I would do word studies on that uh, chapter. I mean, uh. Chapter 4, verse 9. Mm. And then just look it up, bro. Okay. I mean, now we have the internet. We have everything at our fingertips. Yeah. And then you'll get, oh, yeah. you'll get some answers there. You know what? Let me play devil's advocate since we're speaking about the devil. And we just finished speaking about the devil. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, Tony, you, you say you, you read that book as a history book, but now you want to say that it's a philosophical thing? No, it's not a philosophical thing. Where do you get that from? What you just said right now, I would look up how what this means and what it really well, means. Well, in the original language. If you just read it for what it is, then that's, he's explaining these are the kingdoms. We're up. You could see it all. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you, what kingdoms was he talking about? That's a good question. Anyways, let me stop Well, there. it says all kingdoms, though. So and, what it was, that's how I took it. And, it and, all and, kingdoms is that kind of saying the whole world. And that's what basically yeah. the devil's trying to tell God, trying to tell him. That he but just bow down to him and he'll give him the whole world basically. Yeah. So how are you gonna I, I understand that? Yeah, but you know, in Matthew power. 24, it also mentions nations. Kingdom against kingdom, nation against nations. That's why we have to look at what those words those are that's a good one too. Okay. But uh, yeah, also let, let me clarify, it's not about authority. It's about power. It's not about authority. Yeah, and you gotta remember yeah. The, the the these angels were capable to go against God's will break his rules it's not that they had the authority to do it it's that they had the power to do it 
I don't so, know about all that. He didn't read the Bible, so Sandra, he has he has no power because basically they have nothing even close to his, you know, of God's power. This damn That's, flies pissing. You know, I believe I, mean, I believe that they have no kind of control, <laughs> no nothing. They have to ask God any any kind of movement they try to do. That's my belief. Well, Thank you, you Carter. You, you got to re- remember though and realize that they do have power and they show it and they do have authority on this okay, re- no, on this realm that is ours. Because if you notice, yeah, but we, they, they're the ones that but, but are moved, in every single church. The, the, I'm sorry. But yeah, but, I'm saying, but we remember even when they were coming out of that person, they asked, they had a break to ask Jesus where can he go into the pigs. So that's asking with the power of Jesus. So, mm-hmm. nor, nor, ah, but, nobody yeah, doesn't know that story. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. I, do. okay. I know that story. That, that's the whole uh, thing okay. that the, the, the demons get uh, get sent inside, get suckered. Because you heard it from get me. Get suckered into going into the pigs, and the pigs okay. went and wild. What, what part of the country of Israel did that take place? Um, Tell me. Bethlehem? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to no, embarrass him. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? It's just it, it just goes to show you, you know, there's a guy in Africa that, that uh, said, this uh, shaman guy, that uh, in the, and there's... A different power in this world, they're the ones that came up with, with, with created the, the invention of steel. What does this have to do with, in, anyways, color? In, in, the, in the Bible, it does Thank say you, that color. angels did teach humans, specific humans, how to make these weapons. You heard me say that. No, okay. no, 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 Caller, it was in the, the <laughs> yeah, guy was in the tribe. Isn't of, that kind of speaking from the, isn't that kind of speaking from the Nephilim, how they made the, the, the deals with man to yes. be able to learn them weapons? He saw that from the movie no, Noah with no, Russell Crowe. No, no, Anyways, Caller, no, no, I appreciate right. totally you. Totally right. I appreciate because he's going to do <laughs> confusion. All right, Caller, thank you. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you, man. I appreciate uh, you. What's that? Yeah, I just want to thank you guys, man. You guys have a good night. Oh, you you too. too, man. Thank you. The guy was from the tribe of Gad, and that was in the city of Gadara. That's where Jesus went to cast out the, the pigs out of hey. that man. So hey. there you go. And and in the steel was in the book of Genesis, and it was from the tribes of Cain. Okay. Noah so. And Noah was the first human hybrid. And you're the last. Hey. Okay. Uh, call her your name, or where are you calling from? <laughs> Hello? Yes, sir. You sound very, very muffled and far, bro. Uh, hold on. You hear me now? Is yes, better? sir. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I was just uh, listening to the uh, the homie that just came up here talking about the Bible. So I believe in the Bible as well. Mm. Uh, you guys, have you already read Apocalypse 7-1? You're talking about uh, Apocalypse. You're talking about, because uh, in the Catholic Bible, they call it the Apocalypse, but in, in the Revelation. Kings, Revelation. 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 Yes. Mm. Yes. Seven and one, yeah, talking about the cuatro angulos de la tierra. I read it in Spanish, bro, my bad. That's yeah, fine. Oh, yeah, that's... that's fine. So, so what was your question about that? Actually, if you could describe us that, that, that. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it was talking about, you know, the, since you guys are talking about flat earth and stuff, like the Bible also mentions that there's four angles on the, on the earth. Oh. So, you know, I believe that I think the earth is flat as well. Uh, and I don't know, like the other homie made a good point about it, but uh, I think Apocalypse in one that's that's where it talks about the four angels and the four angulos of the, de la tierra. Mm. Uh huh. There's that word again. Yeah, the, well, the the Bible mentions the four corners of the earth. Okay, the north, east, south, and west. I don't necessarily believe that that has to be flat. What? But that's just me. What? Norbert, you're a born again flat earther for the last four <laughs> months, Norbert. and then you're over here talking about what? What, bro? If, stop! If, if I show you a ball, you, stop! You, you're gonna be able to show me the four corners on the ball. Yes. Where are the four corners of that thing? <laughs> North. Ah, yeah. Okay. No, it's actually the angle. There it is. There. There it is. There. I just want to give Norbert a hard time, man. <laughs> exactly. No, no, you brought up a good point, though. Norbert, man. Four corners. You need, you need Christ. No, bro. I'll pray for you, brother. <laughs> pray for me. <laughs> and get, and find out what yes, sir. You're, no, but you're right. Four corners. <laughs> this is what I don't understand. One point you say, you know, you read it as a historical book. So there's four corners. That's how I started to read it. And then that's how I started. And then it became a philis- philosophical. <laughs> it ain't no thing. philosophical, Norbert. It's better than believing in that God you believe in. What's your name? Chichos? <laughs> What's his name? I don't know. No, you know, the guy from your tribe. What's his name? Who? Oh, Cosido. Cos- Cosido. Yeah. That guy. Who is that guy? Cosido. God. <laughs> what, what tribe are you talking about, Norby? Yeah, exactly. The Zapotec tribe. What is that about? The, uh, Wach- the Wachati tribe, the one that but, Ace Ventura talks about. 
It's like oh, it's I like never. Tony. It's like if I describe uh, uh, the 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 Adam and Eve's tree, apple tree. You're gonna be like, but what is that apple tree? See, what see, really see, is it though? You know that he's wrong because the Bible it's never mentioned apple. apple. It never mentioned apple. <laughs> okay, well, it's a tree. Yeah, but and and Tony's gonna be like. But what is that tree? You know, this is called with the wizard, <laughs> not arguing with the wizard. And this is what it's, be, what it's become. I'm just saying, it's either a, a historical, factual uh, book. You know what, Caller? I'm hearing more from him than I am from you. Go ahead, Caller. <laughs> no, that was it, man. I just, you know, I just wanted to bring that up. You know? um, hey, hey, Tony, I love your show, man. Keep it up, bro. Thank you, my bro. Keep Appreciate it up, man. you, I love man. You. I love your music, man. Hey, hey man, and um, the other day I posted a message at the top about the you know the scandalous uh, city. I don't know why you pin, you you pinned it uh you pinned it on the comment section. The first time I heard a, a Chicano rap was that scandalous uh record, bro. It was with the high C, had the proper dose. That's when I started wanting to be a cholo. Oh, you talking <laughs> about that was dope, bro. That's like one of the best cities, man. Oh, you talking about Latin lingo? That was dope. Yeah, that's Latin lingo. Called. There you go. That was, it was yeah. like the the low rider on the cover. That's like right. Wheel. Yeah, yeah, that was and, awesome, bro. And you know what? I'm going to... Yeah, man, I remember that Rapper's Delight? Um, with yeah. Papa Dos. Yeah, that's... I still know the, the worst of this, to this moment. I, I memorized that song, man. Go that's ahead. You know what? Give us, give us a verse from Frank B, bro. Can you do that? Uh, let's see. I said, I hit hop, you will lay. The party jump starts in my Chevrolet. Four Hannahs in the back. Time to have fun. Ernie G's driving. I'm sitting gun now. What you hear won't be no trick when I'm rapping to the beat. Hey. Something like that, right? Hell yes. Yeah. Let's get, let's get a clap <laughs> for him. Yeah, that was like, let's get my hand clap, man. Hell yeah. Thank you, caller. Appreciate it, man. Hey, all right. Hey, thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah, appreciate it. God bless you guys. Norby. I'll thank pray you, for you, bro. Hey. God bless, Tony. Yes, yes. Thank you. Pray hey. for him. At the end of the day, we all, we all have we all have the same God, Tony. Cosido. <laughs> Please find him a, a date. <laughs> you know what? Send him to prison in Texas. I'll tell you one thing, one thing for sure. Do you know what, what, what your name for God is Jesus Christ, right? Here we go. It's called Here We Go. Call her <laughs> your name and where are you calling from? Hi, Tony. Yes. I have, I have a question. So in, in the book of Revelation, I have, I have a friend. He's you, trying to get me to the Bible study, right? But brother, you sound very right muffled. In the book of Revelation. You sound very muffled. Can you repeat that, please? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. So I have a friend who's trying to get me into a Bible study, mm. and and we he, he he's been telling me that the prophecy has been fulfilled already in South Korea, but it seems a little like misleading, right? Because in the yeah. Book of Revelation, it says he the one who overcomes will be given a white stone. I don't know what chapter. I just wanted to get your input on it. Okay. Um. There's. I'm trying to remember the guy who set the date, and this was in the '90s, bro. Um, there was a Korean guy that was going around setting dates that Jesus was coming back. And then when they didn't come back, he gave a different date. And then he ended up saying that it already passed. Um, man, I almost want to say Sung Young Moon. As weird as that may sound, that was like his name. It's, okay. not, it's not some old moon? Yeah, that's the name. Yeah, Sung Young Moon, right? Correct. <laughs> yeah, that's the name that they keep mentioning. Yeah, that's the same guy, bro. I heard about him in the early 90s, bro. I looked into it. I don't ever believe in date setters. The scriptures cl clearly tells us and uh, that nobody knows the day or the hour, bro. And as far as uh, the book of Revelations, I st I'm a futurist. I still believe that it's in the future. There are people that are preter preterists that believe that the book of Revelation is already passed. If that's the case, where's the mark of the beast? Where is the image that the whole world is supposed to uh, worship that you cannot buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast or, you know, uh, um, or his name, you know, on your body. Where is that? That's supposed to be a global event. People said to know that that was uh, uh, Hitler with the Jewish people. They had a number on their hand. No, it's supposed to be a global event, bro. And everybody's supposed to worship this image, the image of the Antichrist, okay? There's going to be a false prophet. Many people think it was right. the Pope. I don't necessarily believe that, but I do believe the Antichrist is alive right now. I'm still a futurist, bro. I still believe in that. So I still believe that the book of Revelation is still to um, come. So for people to say that it passed, I think they're crazy, bro. Alive and well. Right. Alive and well. I also have one last question. When the Bible mentions nation against nation, do you think it means like churches against churches? Because it's, uh, you sound very my analysis, right? We, oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. So when it, when it says nations against nations, um, my, my idea... I could be completely wrong, would be like churches against churches. Um, 
because there's so many divisions that they're standing in now. Yes. Like, what's your take on that? You know, look at. I have friends. Let me just give you one example, okay? I have friends that believe in the Trinity, okay, okay and uh, the triunity of God or the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then I have friends that are oneness, like oneness Pentecostals or oneness Apostolics. They believe in one God. They believe in Jesus Christ, and that's it, okay? Mm. Those two people right. do not get along because of certain scriptures, and when they want to prove their case, they quote the same scriptures, <laughs> they quote literally quote the same mm. scriptures. Well, I mean, the Bible is a contradiction in itself. No, stop, Norbert. You know, I don't need you on, on this one, okay? Because honestly, you're right now you're just bring, creating controversy and honestly just confusion because you want to believe in cosido, okay? And then <laughs> I'm, not I'm, my fault. The okay, I didn't call you on to debate Bible, <laughs> but that's not my fault. I'll give you your time, but let me finish. <laughs> he asked me a question. Go for it. So what happened was this. I even forgot where I was at, bro. <laughs> See, this is what the devil does, bro. Okay, <laughs> this is exact. He says I like to play devil's about, advocate. Uh, referring to the same scripture. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. What was that again? I said oh, we oh, were yeah. discussing. You were mentioning about how you have friends with. Oh yeah, to they the believe in the Trinity and they believe in the oneness. They'll say uh, something like, "And these three are one." They'll say, "You see, it says these three are one," and then they'll say, "You see, over here it says these three are one." So there's one God. No, over here is three, but they're one. And they're fighting over the same scripture, and they believe exactly. Some people will say, no, there's three, right. but they're one. Some people say, no, there's not three, there's only one. And believe it or not, it's foolishness, and that's what causes a lot of denominations, bro. It causes a lot of denominations fighting over the same scripture. So uh, for me, bro, I think a lot of those guys uh, believe the same. They just don't get along because of the way they interpret it. You know, I believe there's one that sits on, on the throne right. in heaven, and that's Jesus Christ, bro. And that's me. Now, yeah. as, as far as uh, division, bro, as far as different churches, I always tell people this, and this is the best advice that I can give you, is that read the Bible for mm -hmm. yourself. You don't need mm -hmm. to go to church. Yeah. Don't go to church yet. Mm -hmm. Read the Bible right. for yourself, and mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. Because when you're done reading it, then go find a church. Yes. And if that pastor does not match up with what the scriptures say, leave and go find another one. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying don't listen to the church. What I am saying is read it for yourself first. If you read the scripture yeah, for yourself, God will lead you to a certain place, bro. Yeah. So now Norbert played devil's advocate. Okay. Well, I definitely would say don't listen to the church because every, every person has their own perspective when it comes to reading. You're going to always see it differently. And the more you dig into it, the more your perspective starts to really evolve and your own path to God becomes more clearer. But most of the times when I hear a lot of people that go and look hunting for the right church, it never happens. It never happens because they've already delved too deep and already carved out a path that unfortunately no, no pastor can, can um, duplicate or help it grow. Your own best bet is right. to just really study it for yourself, talk to God by yourself, and keep your faith, your faith, because that, that that's tough when you uh, try to look for a church. And I know many people that have uh, done this and they keep hopping from a ch one church to another church because eventually the pastor, or whoever's reading the Bible, their perspective will always be different and they will always feel conflicted. You know, with me, it's like a lot okay. of churches today, bro. I'm sorry to say a lot, of, a lot. I'm not going to say all of them. I'm not going to say all of them. A lot of them today look like nightclubs, okay? And it's all about money today, <laughs> okay? If yeah. you go to a church yeah, and they got correct. fog machines and laser shows and disco lights, get out of there, okay? Because that's what churches have become today. Yeah. That's Hillsong. You're right. And I yeah, agree man. with you 100%. Hey. 100%, bro. Yeah. I, I've never really cared for that, but that's another story. Yeah. Anyways, caller, thank you, man. This thing's turned into Bible talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, no, thank nobody you getting mad at us. Thank you, Tony. Thank yes, you, Norbert. Thank you, man. Yes, appreciate you. Thank you, Norbert. Yes. Thank you. Thankfully, nobody's getting mad at us. No, it's all Everybody's right. Everybody's cool. Everybody's We, we got to give a per, uh, our own perspective, but you have to let me finish. <laughs> I like and, the back and forth. <laughs> that's good. It reminds me of PTI. If you guys are, are, are known for uh, part in the interruption, that's how these two guys <laughs> argue with sports. It's entertaining. <laughs> But you know what? We're going to take one more phone call. So whoever wants to has the balls, make the calls. <laughs> Last phone call. Call her your name and where are you calling from? 
Hey, Tony. Uh, this is Angel calling from the San Fernando Valley. Angel from the San Fernando Valley. How are you tonight? What's up, Angel? Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, good. Uh, what's up, Tony? Thanks for taking my call. And what's up, Norby? What's up, man? Yeah, so um, make it quick. I'm going to make it quick. Um, I'm going to piggyback off two of the callers that just called in that mention um, God or Jesus. And I know, Tony, you said, you know, you may not want to turn this into Bible talk, but when you said it, the phone was already ringing. So, yeah, so there's a, there's a man in Australia and there's another man in Kenya, Africa, mm. that are saying that they are Jesus Christ. And they actually have followers and these followers worship them. Like, you know, like get down on knees. They just do worship to him, to mm. them. Mm. So my question is, what would make, what do you think makes such a person uh, go to that extreme to say that? Because it's not like these men could work miracles, you know, as Jesus did. So what do you think makes them go to that, that extreme? You know, uh, I, I want to say something, Norbert, and then I'll let you mm. uh, finish. I've studied a lot of false prophets, uh, whether it was Jim Jones, and he took his people from their homes, took them to Guyana, and then had them drink the, um, uh, the Kool-Aid. Mm. While he himself shot himself in the head, he wouldn't even drink the Kool-Aid. Okay. A lot of people followed him, and I'm going to tell you why, because he had the gift of gab. Mm. Uh, I've talked to ministers in the past that have told me that they actually met the guy, and they've actually heard him speak. They knew him when he was actually real. Mm. And somehow, somehow he, he's just switched up and just after a while, he just stopped reading from the Bible. You know, that's one thing I want to mention something to you. Look up Jim Jones. I'm sure there's documentaries on him. Yeah. One thing that they, that they did not yeah. find in Guyana with all those people dead. One thing that they did not, they did not find a Bible. Damn. They did not find a Bible. Wow. So what he did, he took them. Over there, and they just lived off, lived off of his words. Here's another guy, uh, David Koresh, Waco, Texas. At first, he yeah. said he was a messenger. Mm, yeah. yeah. Then he said he was Jesus. And mm, then he said he was yeah. God. Mm. And then he's telling these weak men that mm. follow him, she's your wife, but she could only sleep with me. I need to plant my seed. Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Same thing. Now, yeah. let's, let's look, and I'm not trying to dog example, anybody, man. but let's look at the nation of Islam. Same thing with the guy they called the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm. He was sleeping with underage girls. Mm. Malcolm X found out about that and put him on blast, and he got taken out. Yeah. Okay? So you ask, why would these people follow, follow him? These people have the gift of gab. Why did these people follow Hitler? The gift of gab. Why did people follow Manson? Wait, wait. Just to clarify, that is all... There's paperwork and, and stories to back up what you said about Elijah Muhammad, right? Yes, yes. Okay, just I mean, to clarify. Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, they made movies and documentaries about yeah. that, bro. So it is public knowledge. You can Google that. That is out there. And these were underage girls mm. that had his kids. Yeah. You know, and again, I have studied Malcolm. So when he went to confront him, all he said was after him, he is the last of his kind and he needs to plant a seed. So that's what Malcolm X just said. You know what? I'm out of here. Yeah. So now back to your question. Why do you think me personally, I think that there are people out there that want to belong to something. They want to yeah. follow something. Yeah. And I believe it starts off good. Mm -hmm. But before you know it, you're so deep into the trenches. You don't know what you got yourself yeah. into. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of this sect. And when I say sect, S-E-C-T. There was a sect out there that called themselves Christians. And these pastors, mm -hmm. these men of God, so-called used to send out, their, send out their wives, and they would call it fishing, fishing, mm -hmm. okay? And what they would do, they would go to bars and bring men back to the church and have sex with them so that the men can join the church and stay there. Really? Yes, it was called fishing. I'm trying to remember the name of the church, but they have also yes. did documentaries on that as well. Uh, let me see if I can find it for you. And you, you look at the guy who started the, the, the church of, um, not the church, but the the Kingdom Hall, the Jehovah Witnesses, Charles Taze Russell. Same thing. Why did they follow him? You look at Joseph mm -hmm. Smith that claimed he found the golden tablets in upstate New York, and after he translated them from Reformed Egyptian, they went mm -hmm. back into heaven, started at the Mormon Church. You know, so there's, yeah. it's just so much out there, man, that now in Matthew 24, Jesus said this, that in the last days, he said it three times. He said it three times. Beware that you are not deceived. 
And then he said, nation will rise against nation, kingdom will rise against kingdom. There would be famines, there would be earthquakes, there would be pest pestilence. He mentioned that three, I mean, he mentioned that one time, pestilence one time, earthquakes one time, wars one time, you know, rumors of wars one time, but he mentioned deception three times. Mm. Beware that you are not deceived. And he said, many will come in my name. Mm. Just they'll knock at your door. Hello, we're from the Church of Jesus Christ, the Latter-day Saints. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. They're just using his name. Mm. Many people like Jim Jones, many people like David Koresh, they, they all come and say he's the guy. Yeah. So all these people, bro, are being deceived, bro. Mm -hmm. They're just being deceived. It's manipulated, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. That's all it is, man. Okay. Hopefully I answered your question. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's what I would think too. Yeah. And um, I just thought I asked because, you know, it's one thing to be an atheist and there's one thing to self-claim you know, call yourself specific, specifically Jesus Christ, and that that takes some nerve. That is blasphemy. That's something that not just anyone could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Call so, it, uh, yeah, yeah. But so, yeah, that was my question. Uh, again, thanks for taking my call. That's a good question. And you guys have a good night. Thank yeah. you. Okay, yeah. Nobra. Anything you want to add to that? Before? Yeah, you know what? Um, the best way, and you know what? Let me tell you the. Has there been others like Jesus, like the person known as Jesus Christ? Yeah. I would say definitely yes. And to clarify that, you got to realize why do people, you know, worship Jesus Christ? Why, why, what's the main reason why they worship him? Because he was willing to sacrifice himself right. for his people, right? Right. Throughout history, there have been many individuals have, that have sacrificed their lives for humanity. They didn't use the name Jesus Christ. They used different names like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Cesar Chavez. They use a lot of different names. But at the end of the day, the most important part is that they sacrifice themselves for the people. And if you want to see the, the difference between who's bad and who's good, ask yourself, why did the angels get punished? They got punished because... They wanted to lay their seed on this planet with the women here. They wanted to do whatever the fuck they wanted on this planet because they had the power. And then they got punished. If you want to see the people that are doing bad, it's exactly the ones that Tony mentioned. The men that say things like, I need to plant my seed to as many places as I can. That's how an angel would talk. Somebody such as the person known as Jesus Christ... He, that individual wouldn't say something like that. They say, I got to give myself for my people. I got to make sure there's justice. I got to make sure there's fairness. I got to make sure that they enter God's realm when they die. I got to save their souls. And this is, we have had people like that. You know somebody that sacrificed their time, effort, and life to help their fellow man. And they don't ask for one fucking thing in return. But then you have people like the ones that Tony mentioned that need to fuck everyone, every girl, and spread their seeds. Look at the Bible. That's exactly what the angels were doing. They were doing that same thing, trying to have as many children with the, with the daughters of man. Yeah, and, and, and then today, you know, number when you have a lot of these cults, because that's what they are, like uh, the polygamous uh, Mormon church, yeah. a, a lot of Mormons don't believe in that anymore. Because that, but that's how the, 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 that church started. And then you do have sex, like S-E-C-T-S, -E -E that still practice polygamy, but the women are getting younger and younger and younger when they're 11, 12 years old, bro. Sheesh. You know, so anyways, uh, we'll leave that at that. Uh, my whole thing is, uh, before we switch the subject and we pretty much give our last uh, shout outs, is that nobody should ever be manipulated. And this is why a lot of people turn away from Wanting to get close to God because they see the division, they see the fighting, mm. they see the money, they see the greed, they see the sex yeah. in the church, and then they're like, I, I'm good. Yeah. So my thing is this, anybody who's watching, read the Bible for yourself, by mm. yourself, Yep. okay, and, and go from there, yep. okay? Other than that, Norbra, I had a really, really great time. Me too. I love talking music, I love talking hip-hop, I love the question uh, that... Uh, uh, Caesar from Paris. Well, uh, all of them, bro. Yeah. Uh, all the questions were dope, Fucking bro. great calls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today it turned into like a Bible talk towards the end. And I mean, it's cool. Sometimes it turns into freaky tales. I don't want to say Bible talk. I want to say spiritual talk. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> so, 
Anyways, Norbert, uh, go ahead and give your shout outs and then uh, I'll give mine. Okay, well, like as always, shout out to the live chat. I love you guys. You guys keep the chat going. We roast each other. We talk shit to each other. But at the end of the day, we're entertaining each other. We're keeping ourselves company. This is a community after all. And again, to everybody that goes on other other cocksuckers platforms and, you know, represents... I love you guys even more because you guys definitely make my day when I hear about you guys and your exploits out there in the YouTube universe. So much love to you, all of you guys. Much love to the subscribers, especially the ones that have already hit the like button. Definitely, definitely much love to you guys because you guys do help the algorithm. Uh, everybody that subscribed, all our members, uh, everybody here. And especially the people in the super chat, much love to you guys because I've seen that you guys put quite a few out there. So I can't wait to hear them because I think that's probably going to take us another half hour. <laughs> Go for it, Alex. Um, 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 you got any super chats over there? Yeah, we got a few. Go ahead. Okay. Um, hands on. Uh, he's been a member for eight months. Thank you. Uh, he said RFK, RFK Junior 2024. Hey. Uh, Enrique Ledesma, he's been a member for nine months. He said, Rhodium Radio is for the culture. Keep that shit 100. I know I know Jack Cousteau from King T. Get Young Melee on, on GTA SA, uh, GTA San Andreas main voice artist. Oh, that'd be dope. 100 saludos, the homies Kiki from Escondido. Hey, thank you. Okay, Zapata Viva, vi, Vive dropped two dollars. He said, uh, Paton or po, Potan, I guess, Potan Stone Hands fight this Saturday. Oh, okay. Okay, um, Enrique Ledesma dropped another 199. He said, Rhodium Radio is therapy. Hey, thank you. Uh, Enrique Ledesma dropped another 199. He says Spencer Baca is in the casa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Alejandro dropped five dollars. He didn't say nothing. Hey, he thank dropped you. another two dollars. Alejandro, shout out to him. Thank you. Enrique Ledesma dropped uh, 999. He said, "Tell the lawless story." Mm. You know what? I am going to share that first on uh, the members only when we drop the history with Scandalous. So I have pictures on that, and I can show all the music, especially the ones that Frost was on, and uh, Slowpin was on, and uh, Nino Brown was on, and AOT was on. You know, the guys that I never worked with. But yeah, they'll be on, on that. All right. <laughs> okay. Alejandro dropped $2. He said, um, match my $2. Hey. And Aldo Hernandez dropped $2. He said, flat earth theory is uh, anti-NASA movement. And that would be all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You know, first and foremost, I want to thank all the callers. I want to thank everybody in the live chat. I want to thank everybody who gave. I want to thank everybody who liked, commented, subscribed. Uh, yes, yeah, smash that like button. It truly does help our uh, algorithm. Uh, I, like I said, I want to thank everybody. You know, always remember this, that, you know, one of my favorite shows is a show called PTI on ESPN. That's where we get, like, I get my news. And there's always two guys, Mike, Mike Wilbon. Tony Kornheiser, and they're always going at it, but they're friends. If you guys see that, please understand that this is a show. Okay, I got nothing but love for Norby. Hey, but here. we're always going to go back. I do the same thing with my brother. I do the same thing with Alex. That's just the way we do it. We know that it's entertainment, and, and we, that's what we do. So other than that, I want to give a shout-out to Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise. I want to give a shout-out to Marvelous Inc. I want to give a shout-out to the Hip Hop Jedi, Be Scandalous, Magic Girl, our moderator, and also to Norbert News and Norbies. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody, uh, for being here. Friday, Freaky Tales, and then Sunday, we'll be back. Much love and respect. We are out of here. Thank you.